Howdy, folks. Welcome into the Smite Challenger Circuit. It's week five. We're wrapping up here and headed into Masters very, very shortly. Dimes, Judas, buddy, like I said, this is it. Week number five. We're rounding out phase number one here, and the top two teams of the SEC are heading to Masters. But these two teams that we're going to watch today are a little bit more concerned about being relegated out of the SEC. Yeah, very much concerned. Both teams coming into this week, zero and four. So it's all about not finishing last in this set. And we'll have to see exactly how these two teams shake up against each other. Well, picks and bids are ready. Let's hop right in here, Judas. And on paper, I mean, the Yomi Tanuki are a, theoretically an SPL level team, right? I mean, oh. Death Walker, Ice Ice, Streak Up joining the squad. And on the other side, the Olympus Bolts sort of uh, maybe more uh, newcomers to this level of competition in, in Sager, Hedgehog, Port, etc. Are you kind of kind of interested to find Yomi Tanuki in this position here in week five? I, I would say I'm not interested at all. I'm shocked. I, I, I don't really believe it. I mean, three of these players for the Yomi Tanuki were playing on Worlds like months ago. Not this isn't last year. This is months ago these players were playing of course there's been a couple of changes since then notably johnny no longer in the jungle rotwin has now left the team and emilito coming into support but these players were there and not looking like going out first round right they they came up against the olympus bolts funnily enough in worlds and uh, a lot of people actually tipped them to win that game and not get knocked out first round but so a bit of a world's rematch here we do have bolts and yomi tanuki squaring up again much different bolts team as you mentioned and bolts looking for sir cat the top pick it's a good way to uh get your draft ready i suppose Don't fear well, both these squads taking out plenty of adcs it. in the ban phase Nox feel my wrath the number one pick for the yomi tanuki and rom getting snapped in with all of those ADC picks, you don't want anything lower than probably that fourth pick there. Do you foresee this Nox heading to the support role, or should we see a little bit of a switch up here? Uh, it's almost certainly a Nox in the no, support role. Now, I haven't actually seen so Emilito mate. play it. Of course, Emilito has been playing ADC a lot lately, Time but Nox work. isn't you know that complicated of a guard. You know, you, if you can hit the root and the cripple, it, it, you, you're pretty much set. I, everything above that is almost additional. You know, Nox is just so strong. At the moment of doing that, you know, now Aphrodite coming out from the bolts. We've seen a lot of Aphrodite, of course, this is on the previous patch, which, uh, you know, we're still seeing plenty of this guard, but doesn't bring a whole lot of like wide CC to the table, right? It's single target lockdown, which Aphrodite excels at, Sir Cat excels at, and Hercules pretty much excels at as well. So, you know, beyond the Yomi Tanuki to not be getting picked off, but Xing Chen. Locked in third pick for the Yomi Tanuki. I don't believe we've seen this guard a single time in year 10. Uh, yeah, it's been a hot minute here, providing plenty of CC, a little bit of lockdown as well. So, interested to see how that shores up, especially with the Nox heading into the support role. Mm -hmm. Shinchen probably heading into the solo lane. Second round of bands coming through here. A couple more ADCs taken off the table. So, Are huge left? shots at streak up here. And, uh, and Jocko on the Olympus Bolts, and then the junglers, head, uh, Wheelix and Bakasura taken off the board on the other side. Hunbot's the immediate pickup for the Tanuki. Yeah, looking at the difference between the two drafts, of course, the Yomi Tanuki opting for a much more sustained team fight style. You know, lock, uh, Nox to provide some lockdown. Xing Chan, of course, with the Wide Circle Ultimate, combines very well with the other Wide Circle Ultimate of the Fino <laughs> Evil from Yanus. the Moonbats, you know, so purification beads being burned away. But Yanis coming out from the bolts. Again, another I decent single target god. His army as well follows it up. I'm, you know, the, the, the bolts draft is somewhat unusual, but I, I'm quite a big fan of it, actually. Plenty of CC on the board. I mean, between Sir yeah. Cat, Hercules, and Giannis, displacement through the roof, obviously. Yomi Tanuki looking for that final pick. Don't do this to me. Not in week five. Come on. We've, <laughs> we've made it this far. Do not lock in the Opwash. Blessedly, uh, the Kronos is going to be swapped over to. I'm pretty sure that Opwash was a shot at me, uh, personally. <laughs> Kronos locked in here. That'll be heading towards, uh, theoretically, the middle lane for the Yomi Tanuki. Yeah which is uh, also a, a bit of a change from where we typically see the, the Mage Hunter style play from the Kronos. Yeah, Kronos, a, a favorite god of Zeros. We see Zeros pick it very consistently. In fact, I think Zeros picked it at both games at Worlds as well. So not too surprising to see, uh, well, a, a, when your player has a favorite god like this, it's pretty easy to just keep picking it back up. Well, we've got plenty to talk about between these two squads, but let's head right into game and get this thing underway. The two... Worst squads in the SEC shoring up against each other here in week number five, the final round of games before we head to Smite Masters here in just 
a little bit, Judas. I'm so excited to see the competition, especially between these top two SCC squads and uh, the more the, the bottom end tier of the SPL because we've always seen some great competition. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, last year, the uh, the Hex Mambo really taking it to some SPL squads. So as time has moved on, I'm curious to see how these teams have adapted to Season 10 and whether we're going to see another real, uh, real barn burner between these lower tier SCC teams and the high tier SPL one. Yeah, that's uh, you know something to look forward to for sure. It's always great to see, but, but something these two teams will not be looking forward to <laughs> sure. is the relegations possibly coming Oof. through. You know, like you mentioned, when you get to see teams that are leagues apart come together, you know, it, it, it's always where you get very interesting games. But these two at the bottom ends, but somewhat unexpectedly, you know, bolts at the start of this phase. A lot of people would have actually put them as a lower team in this first phase and unfortunately haven't managed to get away from those expectations but yomi tanuki on paper like we said these players played at worlds not expected to be down here but down here is where they find themselves and they're gonna have to well start proving to some people that they don't belong here uh, judas talk to me a little bit here this is a pretty i would say traditional matchup within jungle right sir Ket versus yes. the hun bots Talk to me both about who's looking to get active early, the targets around the map, as well as that 1v1 in the jungle, because if my expectations are right, Ice Ice is going to look to gain any advantage he can over Hedgehog. Yeah, uh, Ice Ice is going to want the advantage, but Ice Ice on the Hunbats, generally a god we'll see not really come alive until level 5, as Deathlock are feeling very low under the tower. But you know, once Hunbats gets that ultimate, it all it all kind of comes down to who is engaging on the other, because Hedgehog on the circuit, you know, if you can combine all of those poisons coming through the Cobra's Kiss into that last breath, you can really blow up a Hunbats before they have time to react, and considering the potential CC and damage coming out from iPort and this Yanus, especially, but the ch- fact they can portal through walls and get involved quickly it, it, it's really going to be close I, i'd say i give the slight edge to hedgehog in the individual fights but you know once these teams start grouping up it's it's all going to be on the positioning of ice ice and notably hedgehog electing to not pick up that blink early game going to beads instead so looking for a little bit more safety against ice ice on this hun bots in the jungle and i mean lockdown across the board for the yomi yeah. Tanuki, right emma Lido is on this nox as one of the premier lockdown gods in the support role zeros obviously has that stun on his third ability ice ice and death walker combined for some excellent cc as well so hedgehog may be a little bit afraid of the early game lockdown yeah I'm, I'm, we mentioned of course in picks and bands that the team composition for the olympus bolts is all about single target right mm, and sure. when you have only one target generally you're in melee range of that target and emily could just drop a silence on you you don't even have to hit the root just if you can drop that silence almost works like a shield right you, you you can't actually attack through that with all your ability so that will definitely interrupt whatever hedgehog's looking to do but only if emilito's healthy enough to be around for the fight and you know it might even be the case that the bolts decide to target this knocks out you know it does have a benevolence rather than the loner's mask so will not quite be so tanky early on and might well be a target when we get into these you know, first few phases of objectives like when the gold fury pulls start coming through but don't forget dimes this is an eu game it's going to be quite some time before we start seeing anything really kicking off so the important thing to watch for here as level fives begin to tick over is does anyone opt to make a very spicy play and try to invade another another buff camp well ice ice is working on that transcendent so that tells me that maybe a, a little bit more passive is Imolito dropping low here contesting the shield buff ice ice making the rotation as you mentioned fear no evil is online for the jungler but once again that transcendence i mean you really love to get that thing stacked up before you hard engage on these targets and this left side has been pressured all game long i mean we're not even four minutes over in this one yet and the olympus bolts have nearly taken both bastions on the left side of the map as ice Ooh. ice once again making the rotation grabbing that shield buff not looking to engage on the left side of the map just a little bit more health for himself there was definitely a possible opportunity over there for ice ice because does have the blink and fear no evil which is always just a standard combo really effective for humbats but you mentioned going into the transcendence it, it, that tells me that ice ice is expecting this to be a long game and you know that's that's not you know against what we would tend to see but Melito on the wrap around onto Chuck. It does catch the dash actually, forces the purification beat out. And that's a small win, but it's a big win. And again, in terms of EU, because now Ice Ice, when they feel like it, might try to make a move over to this two lane again, getting aggressive. Well, Emilito is not done dashing forward, forcing the ultimate 
as well out of Jokin. So that's going to be down for a good chunk of time there. And Melito returning the ultimate. It's Deathwalker getting knocked down here a little Ooh. bit by Sager. Both Hedgehog and Ice Ice. Iport has made the rotation as well on that Giannis. But Deathwalker and Ice Ice just have too much mobility. Able to escape. So that's going to be a burned ultimate from the middle lane as well. And that's quite a bit of mobility wiped off the map. Yeah, long rotation over from iPod. I actually opted to use the through space and time at the very end for damage rather than for the fast rotation. Of course, Deathwalker on the Xing Chan, not really going to fall down, if, especially if you can see his through space and time coming. It's like, oh, well, what am I going to do about this? I guess I'm going to leap back to tower. Scrap again over this blue buff. I said it might happen, and here it comes. Taunts off the mark. Double fear, no evil. Catches nice. Hedgehog and Saber. Forces the beads out, but a great boulder. Double immunity there, and Deathwalker and Ice Ice come up with absolutely nothing just well-timed ultimates and relics from the olympus bolts allow them to secure the blue buff and escape a potential first blood situation yeah when you've got a guardian in the solo lane looking to pressure them is your know, sort of bread and butter for a jungler you know it, it's very rare they can actually threaten you now you know death walker is more more than happy to attempt to take it back and almost secure their own uh their own blue buff but when when you you know like i said when you've got a guardian and a jungler that isn't the best at bursting someone down at this stage. Again, going for the Transcendence, only now finishing it, so not a huge amount of damage coming out from Hunbats. It's a pretty safe play for the Bolts to make, and you know they get away with it with, without a whole lot expended. You know, Hedgehog does use the Purification Beads, unfortunately, but other than that, you know, Sega's more than happy to just toss that boulder pretty much on cooldown, because, I mean, what would you need that for? It's a rock. You know, if, you, if carrying it around is heavy. You might as well put it somewhere else. And yeah, it, it's just a pretty easy secure from the bolts there. But expect to see that for the next few respawns, actually, until until we actually see these soul laners getting involved. I'd, I'd be surprised if Deathwalker sees another blue buff this game. Which is never ideal situation for a solo laner. That blue buff is kind of the, uh, the bread and butter of the solo lane. As here comes Streak Up wrapping around onto Jokin, dashing forward again, Ooh. forcing the ultimate from that Izanami just for space control. So plenty of pressure on the side of the Yomi Tanuki. In the middle lane, also the Tanuki getting forced out there as Emilito is dropping rather low. And while we're in the middle lane here, Judas, I want you to talk me through Zeros on this Kronos a little bit. Because like you mentioned, Zeros is one of the favorite picks for Zeros, right? Kronos in the middle lane here. We've seen it at Worlds. We've seen him succeed on it time and time again. But nobody else takes this pick into the middle lane. Is there something that Zeros brings to this pick specifically that makes it so powerful? Or why are we not seeing more Kronos? Well, it's a little bit surprising because there are a lot of strong mages at the moment. Like, even Yanis on the other side. And, you know, you see, you see gods like Merlin, Tiamat, Baba Yaga. It's, it's more of a preference, like, for, for me personally, to see those more standard mages. But with Zeros, like I said, when you've got someone so practiced on a pick... And that pick in particular is a god like Kronos, right? This god could potentially take over a game, but not if they take all this damage! Uh, I'd be blown up. Not even time to get that rewind off. Just a great taunt into the portals from iPort. And bye-bye goes Zeros. I mean... <laughs> what is there to break down, Judas? Uh, what there to break down is the actual Kronos himself. Kronos has stepped up. No ward coverage on the on the rear side. You know, and, and Zeros, if you're going to step up like that, you, you need to be more than aware. Now that is first blood, of course. Maybe second blood as well. Streak up in some trouble and left. Instant beats from Streak up, but that just allows Hedgehog to get the ultimate off. One shot doesn't connect. Uh, Jockins made the rotation as well, and pure lockdown onto Streak up. Silence comes through. Ooh. Roll's not going to get him out of danger there. And second blood, you called it, Judas Hedgehog, picking up a second kill for themselves on this circuit. Streak of falling on the left side of the lane. And if you're the Olympus right Bolts, side. getting going early is exactly what you're looking for. Ice Ice returns the kill onto Sager over in this right side, as you mentioned. And that puts it 2-1, to one, Olympus Bolts advantage. Well, you see there, you know, Hedgehog is getting extremely aggressive on that left-hand side, but Ice Ice has recognized, hey, I am i can't impact that side of the map from here, so we're going to impact the other side of the map. And, you know, the, the blue buff I said Deathwalker might not see, it turns out they actually just see Sega's blue buff <laughs> instead. And, ooh, Ice Ice takes a wow. ton of damage you know, from the cow. unstable Vortex. But it's, it's interesting that to see both junglers actually split apart. Generally, you'll see junglers almost match rotations, but I suppose Ice Ice, you know, recognizing the threat of the blue buff, decides they're going to help help and protect it. Hedgehog somewhat second-guessing that and then opting to instead get aggressive on the left-hand side, the purple buff. And I think that's exactly what Jokin needed, right? He's an army coming under a lot of pressure, had to expend the ultimate again uh, defensively. 
and Izanami's not the god that wants to do that, right? Izanami wants to be the one putting out the pressure, wants to be able to step up and be aggressive when needed. And now, you know, with just that one kill, it didn't even go on to Jokin, but it does mean that Izanami's now ahead in Devara's Gauntlet stacks, does a little bit more damage than Streak Up, and, you know, can feel safe to play a bit more aggressive if they choose to on this left hand side. We just ticked over 10 minutes here. A little bit of a gold lead for the Olympus Bolts, but I wouldn't write home about it. But Pyromancer is online. I port Impox and Hedgehog making the rotation. Sager's joined the rest of his squad as well. Those Pyromancer are getting crit down here by the Circuit and the rest okay. of the Olympus Bolts. Absolutely no return here from the Yomi Tanuki. The Olympus Bolts pick it up. A little bit of a Yana Assault just to get out of danger. Make sure they escape the objective no problemo there and extend their gold lead just oh, a little that. bit more. Uh, the placement of the through space and time there is fantastic. Sends it right over to the Gold Fury pick, because generally the answer for a Pyromancer going down is to start the Gold Fury. With the through space and time, that ain't happening. The whole team from the Bolts just rock it on over and make sure there's no shenanigans going on. And now they're in position to even look for another fight, maybe take this Gold Fury away as well. Like The, the actual way they played that was excellent. You know, sneaking it away, Deathwalker's got no chance of stealing it. Zeros on the Kronos doesn't have a whole chance of stealing it either. And now getting aggressive onto Ice Ice instead on the left-hand side. Ice Ice locked down there by Hedgehog. Fear no evil to try to buy a little bit more time, but an instant beads and an instant auto out of Hedgehog. Puts the Hunbots in the ground. Emilito and Streak up trying to make something happen onto Jockin here. Here comes Zeros rotating in oh on my Hedgehog. God. Shots coming out from Hedgehog. Finds a second kill for himself with the help of the Izanami. Zeros forced into the rewind. And the Olympus Bolts just coming up on top again and again in this one. And a fantastic Cobra's Kiss from Hedgehog right there. In the thick of the action, right in the middle of three enemies. And you pop the Cobra's Kiss onto the two most important targets. Fantastic there. And it's what allowed them to take down Emolito. And I, I, I said it right there. They've got the position around the goal field. They didn't even have to take the objective. They can instead get aggressive and jock in. Whoa. Certainly don't want to be giving up that kill Ultimate. cheaply. But the Astral Barrage comes out. Streak up in the air, finds, finds one. one under Jockin, does it by the second, has to find the third, is it gonna find it? Streak up dropping a kill under Jockin Ooh. there, but no uh, no shame, it's a tough one to hit. Hedgehog jumping in, here's the Cobra Skiss, oh, the whoa. blink on the <laughs> iPort, oh. the Giannis blink comes through big, and Hedgehog advances to 5-0 and oh in game number one here, Judas. And if you're a Sir Cat, you are just licking your chops at this fantastic start. Oh, every kill for their team so far does Hedgehog have, and it's it's shining right now. The Sir Cat is at its at its absolute peak, has the Stone of Binding built up as well. So isn't even just purely damaging this enemy team. You know, actually reduces their protections some some too, which allows iPort to do as much damage as you saw there, right? Actually blinking forward was iPort on the Yana. So I think for a bit of aggression, and sh it shone through right there. You know, that was fantastically played from just a little bit of aggression from Streak Up, right? It, it was an astral barrage not even halfway up their lane still not safe you know not safe at all and the, the chase down was fantastic the aggression from hedgehog being confident to dive that tower in these first 12 minutes it, it, it's really good play from the bolts and they're playing at a pace that i don't think we've seen from them this phase so far and i don't think the yomi tunuki were prepared for it it's slowly ratcheting up right you get that slow early game you find a little bit of an advantage and you take that advantage and you start running with it. You start ratcheting up the pressure. And that's exactly what the Olympus Bolts have done here. Still not a significant gold lead, though. Just call it about 2K as Hedgehog once again putting pressure on this left side of the map. I mean, poor streak up and Emilito getting targeted out here by this Sir Cat. Emilito already using the silence preemptively. He's going to get ulted by Hedgehog. Oh. Combination Izanami kick right back in. Impox finds that kill in a surrender vote. I... I hesitated there, Judas, because no the surrender vote came out and it stalled my brain for a second. <laughs> stalled your brain for good reason. It's just insane to see that. And the way the bolts are playing, it was almost deserved. I, I, we mentioned the single target pressure. That's exactly what's happening. All of these kills are happening one at a time. Hedgehog with five kills, not a single double kill. Just every now and then they're picking someone off. Every three minutes or so, just, just finding someone, taking them down, 
find the next target when it's an opportunity for it. And they're not overstepping either. Grouping as a pack, punishing zeros for this slow pick on the Kronos. Now, most mid laners would struggle to keep up with this pace, but Kronos specifically, you know, doesn't really do a whole lot of damage right now. Has only the Doom Orb and the Spear of Desolation finish. So, you know, no Polynomicon for lots of damage. No stacking item to be, you know, getting ahead and farm. It, it, it's just not too much of a threat. So, the, you know, the Bolts aren't scared of it. You know, if, if, if Zero's decided to show up to that fight, they probably would have killed him too. You know, that's that's just the way it would go. And Amelito mentioned not so tanky on the Nox, double stacking with the prophetic cloak and the gauntlet of Thebes, neither anywhere close to being fully stacked up either. Like this this game needs to go very long for the Tanuki to stand much of a chance because the, the Olympus Bolts, it's only a 3k gold lead, but it's trending towards uh, spiking up much, much quicker than that. Especially if the Yomi Tanuki lose a big time fight here on the right hand side, defending this Pyromancer it could be a turning point in this game. Gold Fury going the way of the Olympus Bolts just a, a minute ago or so. Deathwalker, the target here for the Olympus Bolts who've grouped up onto wow. the solo laner. Ice Ice is here, Fino Weevil online for space control if needed. Iport going in with that through space and time. Sager following right up, but it was all just a diversion to allow this Pyromancer to get started up and taken down by the Olympus Bolts. Sager shoving out. A half health Hunbots and the Yomi Tanuki. I mean, it's not like they're 10k down here, but it kind of feels like it, Judas. And it feels like it's because that's how the fights are going. Woo! The gold! Wow! Goodbye. The gold that the, the, the Yomi Tanuki are getting is in these towers on the map. They've actually taken down two tier 1 towers and the tier 2 tower in the middle lane. That's why the gold is relatively even. And you know, that, that's, I suppose, how they want to be playing it, right? Like I said, this game needs to go late. And what it means by go late is the Yomi Tanuki just need gold in the pockets. And that's how they're going to get it, is through these little objectives. But... We saw some aggression on the Deathwalker on the right-hand side, finally, and as much as there was a small attempt earlier, the Xing Chan has been mostly left alone. Now, that does mean that they are pretty high farm, actually second highest XP per minute in the game right now, and that's fine, but it's Xing Chan. This god doesn't need to be getting all this farm to be put ahead. You know, if that was a Vamana or something of the sort that they can show up later on, even a Horus to some extent, maybe I'd be more concerned, but with Xing Chan... They'll get in your face. There'll be a bit of a CC bot, but the damage that will come through isn't going to be anything scary. And even then, we saw the Olympus Bolts get aggressive on the Deathwalker, and if there wasn't an objective on the map, you bet they would have committed even more to take that Ching Chen down. So, at the moment, the Yomi Tanuki are still okay. They are a small amount of gold behind, not a whole lot, but they need to start putting these fights together, because if they can't win a team fight, they're certainly not going to win the game, and Libus Bolts, you know, at some point, they're going to take these towers of their own, and then that uh, gold lead might get even bigger in the next few minutes. Oh, Hedgehog making the rotation. Emilito maybe a little bit too far forward here. Jumps right into the silence from the Nox. Dash wow. forward with the Deathbane. Aphrodite Bird's coming through as well, and it's just a matter of time before Emilito finds the Grayscale. Jockin is going to pick up the first for themselves there. And eight and one as we eclipse 17 minutes and push toward 18 minutes here, Judas. Still about a 2,000 gold lead on the side of the Olympus Bolts. And now you say the Yomi Tanuki want to take this later as there's your double kill. Zero's going down Finally. the middle lane to, who guessed it, Hedgehog. 7-0-2 oh, on the circuit. Got a level lead in the jungle there. Yomi Tanuki want to push this late. I get that. Yeah. My concern, Judas, maybe you can talk me through it, is the insane amount of healing on the Olympus Bolts between Aphrodite, between Sager on this Hercules, and the Devo's Gloves. It seems like the Olympus Bolts will be able to heal and sustain so much that the Yomi Tanuki will almost have to burn through three separate health bars before they can kill a member of the Bolts. Yeah, and it's all about who do you take down, right? We, the, the Yomi Tanuki have got almost a team fight style composition where they've got lots of big circles, lots of lockdown, but you can't take one target down at a time because of the sustain, and Aphrodite is just going to get them out of danger. So then you have to try to take down all of them. But how are you going to take down all of them when A, they've got such a huge lead on you, and B, like you said, the sustain comes through individually as well. You know, Hercules can sustain up pretty safely. The Devourer's Gauntlets for Jockin will help out this Izanami, who of course only gets more dangerous when they get low health due to that passive coming through. So it's going to be really difficult for the Yomi Tanuki to take down much of anyone. Uh, it will require someone to heavily overstep or maybe you know, at these Phoenix sieges coming up, which you know the bolts are nowhere near getting to yet, but 
again, they, they, they've shown that they can take down the frontliner in Emolito easily enough. Zeros hasn't even used their rewind yet, I don't think, because they can't get there in time, because the damage from Hedgehog is just too high. I, I'm not really sure where it's going to work for the Yomi Tanuki, but... I mean, that's why these players are, are much better than I am. They should be planning a window because at the moment, the window is shut tight right now. Well, Judas, the combination of the Tier 1 Tower in the mid lane and the Primal Fury is going to crack open this game for the Olympus Bolts, who've made the rotation over to this solo lane. Deathwalker staring down pretty much the entirety of the squad as the Pyromancer is going to be the target for the Order Division here. That's going to go down without a peep from the Yomi Tanuki. And, I mean, farm... Tough to find on the map for the Tanuki, right? You've got the, kind yeah. of the, the double-edged sword of pushing down towers and, and bridging that gold gap is, well, now the lane's pushed up. You can't safely farm unless you want to step into the enemy side of the map. So where do you find this experience? Where do you find this farm to try to catch the Olympus Bolts? Well, that's where the Yomi Tanuki will be quite happy with the uh, comeback mechanics in the game right now. Of course, have sure. those gold camps in the back with those gold chests they can pick up. They'll help out whoever's struggling for gold in particular. That will be Emolito right now. Uh, I'm sorry, I've just caught my eye. I'm going to scrap what I'm talking about. Emolito. No, not Emolito. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Zeros right now. Hmm. 1,700 player damage. Yeah. Just above them, Ice Ice, less than 3,000. It's an issue. I, it feels that way, right? It feels like that is what's happened because we haven't seen any fighting, but but we haven't seen any fighting. <laughs> like that means there has not actually been fighting in these first few stages. You know, like it's, it's we're 21 minutes in, and the 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 damage is just not there. No, Deathwalk is the target, and look, they're, they're just pushing in. And will will zeros and Ice Ice finally have an impact? Absolutely no hesitation from the Bolts here. Sager leading the charge for his team. Shoving forward, Emily is the new target, but a great Fear No Evil is going to separate this team fight in half port. Locked down there by the Nox Silence. And the first kill comes through in this team fight. Deathwalker picking it up. Oh, Hedgehog, exactly no! Sure if that's who you wanted on, Emilito going down to Hedgehog. And now the solo laner and the support have found a couple kills in this scrap. Jogging the next target, Deathwalker. Jashing forward, that's one leap. Got a second one on the way. But a great dark portal there to shove Zeros out of this fight. Aegis is going to keep Jockin alive for just a second longer before Ice Ice puts the finishing touches on that kill. And the first real team fight in this game goes the way of the Yomi Tanuki. Well, the Yomi Tanuki were looking for a window. The Bolts decided to open the window and dive out of it. What are you guys doing? Diving behind the Tier 1 tower. I know that it was a 4-on-5 situation. Streak Up had been pushing on the left-hand side this whole time. But Deathwalk is not an easy target to take down. They already haven't managed to take down this, this Jing Chan. And they won't be able to because they've given them so much room. Now, the Fire Giant will be started up. And the damage will be pretty good because Streak Up and Zeros have just been farming this whole time. Impox as well. Could have saved the life of Hedgehog, but actually missed the kiss and wasn't able to keep them alive. So that's a fire giant going the way of the Yomi Tanuki. And now they're looking for some kills after the fact. But Sager stuck in the left lane with no teleport. Impox, no ultimate as well. Knock up, put in the ground there. Put that one on the Kronos. That's the first kill for Zeros in the middle lane. That'll help the scoreline there. Tier 2 tower looking to be the next target for the Yomi Tanuki. And Judas, what happened? I mean, the Yomi Tanuki were firmly firmly in the back seat of this game and within one team fight it's like their confidence has skyrocketed they grab a fire giant they kill impox tier two tower goes down and it, the yomi tanuki have a gold lead what the hell yeah i, I mean it, it all starts with ice ice getting a five-man pheno evil right there was a big dive and you know, I, I would call it an overcommit for the olympus bolts but it wasn't initially it didn't quite seem that way but once ice ice does finally find that huge ultimate they've been looking for all of a sudden the olympus bolts are, are, are split in two minds they don't know whether they want to continue the aggression and make up for the fact that they've overstepped or then retreat some of the team retreat some cases they stepped up and in particular hedgehog has to retreat through a tier one tower all of a sudden, you're taking tower shots that you just can't survive through. Then we have the fact that Impox wasn't actually connected to a target because you know, early on, we've seen Jockin fall down as well. So it, it all just got really split up and you know they didn't really play around this Aphrodite correctly. They do group up as five to allow a gigantic Hunbat's ultimate. It, it just sort of gave every opportunity for the Yomi Tanuki. Now, the Tanuki 
still had to capitalize on that, right? The Bulls were making a mistake, but it's still, it's only a mistake if you can punish them for it. And they did that fantastically, because we know that these players are good players. They do deserve to be here, as much as they've had a poor record so far. They've still earned their spot. And if you give these strong players more than a window that they need, a you know, bit of overconfidence from the Bolts just means that Sanuki can take a good opportunity, and they've converted that right-side fight into a left-side Phoenix push. Wow, and, I mean, within five, seven minutes, the Yomi Tanuki have gone from the losing team to pushing a Phoenix here, as Sager's the target of all five members of the Yomi Tanuki. The Olympus Bolts with a, a half-decent Phoenix defense here, especially with that dark portal, and Giannis throwing out those unstable vortexes. Plenty of damage online here for the Bolts. It's just got to connect with the priority targets. Emilito already chunked down to half HP. Off the mark there with that lockdown, that first ability. Deathwalker hovering around this right-hand side. Sager does have the boulder available, so instant CC if necessary to stop Deathwalker from moving in with the Whirlwind of Rage and Steel ultimate. And the Yomi Tanuki may be a little bit hesitant to really commit to this fight. Lenny of Sustain online for the Olympus Bolts as well. Deathwalker, I, mean, I can feel, feel the tension there. Deathwalker desperately wants to go in, but the Yomi Tanuki decide to play it safe, take their Fire Giant, take their towers back off, and try to push this lead a little bit further. Strange call from the Tanuki. I think maybe looking for the Bolts to make a mistake. As they've, you know, they've made one mistake. Maybe they've tightened up since then. But it, it, it's not something you'd usually see where you have all five members just waiting outside one Phoenix. Especially when they don't have anything exceptionally good to break the base open. You know, th sure. there was Deathwalker waiting in the wings with that Whirlwind Rage and Steel. But four sets of Purification Bees on the other team with an Aphrodite being the one without it. You know, it, it just means that the, the likelihood of getting anyone in that in that ultimate is, is just not going to happen. So if that's not working, what's your other way in? You know, is, is it through Ice Ice? But Ice Ice, you know, backed away, not wanting to step on up. Emilito has not been particularly tanky and still hasn't quite yet finished that prophetic cloak. So it was never going to happen that way, but the Tanuki opted not to split push and, you know, try to pressure two waves at once, which... I suppose just means they are happy to let this fight go because it's still only a 1,000 gold lead, right? The, the Tanuki did have the Fire Giant, but didn't have the gold lead that you would usually associate with the team having Fire Giant. So understandable that they backed her off and are just waiting to take this next Fire Giant fight. But that means we're going to have two teams butting heads, relatively equal in gold and pretty equal in levels as well. And uh, this is about as tight as it gets 26 minutes in. Sager wants to make something happen here, but a great silence from Emilito is going to put that one in the ground. Sager's not done, though. Aphrodite Kiss Ow. has been broken off of Sager. Fear no evil Ooh. on the backline priority targets. Ice Ice forced to jump out. Boulder comes through, only connecting with Emilito. Impox and Sager healing up between Aphrodite and Hercules. That dreaded, obnoxious combination. And Hedgehog <laughs> is not quite done with the half health Yomi Tanuki. Olympus Bolts have created enough space for themselves to start up this Fire Giant. Still three members of the Tanuki here to make sure that it doesn't go without oh, a fight. Shoving forward is Hedgehog, grabbing Imolito, chunking him. down. Jocking with the crits coming through. Hedgehog auto attacks on a streak up. Meanwhile, Zeros is getting oh, no. targeted in the back line. Deathwalker can't even find one. Hedgehog! To escape safely, and Ice Ice with the return kill on the Hedgehog. Hedgehog does go down eventually. Isis manages to retreat. Deathwalker now the target, but I think the Olympus Bolts are just going to pull this Fire Giant, and why not? They, they might have lost Hedgehog, but they have a ton of damage for this objective, and most importantly, they have three Runic Bombs if they decide that this Fire Giant might come under threat. Now, it should be fine. I don't think there's a whole lot of steel potential. Ice Ice, of course, without that uh, Fear No Evil coming through, but Deathwalker's in the pit. Deathwalker and Ice Ice are here. Wow! Port gonna find the first kill there on the Ice Ice. Jockin takes down Deathwalker. And that's gonna be a free fire giant for the Olympus Bolts here, who I, I don't even want to call it a comeback. Like they've been in the in the front <laughs> yeah. seat this entire game. A little bit of a misstep. Yomi Tanuki capitalized. And now the Olympus Bolts probably back where they should be after their great start. Yeah, it may hopefully fall the Olympus Bolts. It is just a brief 
uh, momentary you know, laps where, where the Yomitsugi have some pressure, but you know, they, they were looking great throughout that entire fight. Hedgehog had the space to work with, did eventually fall down, but took two players with them. That's you know it's good enough for any jungler, especially later on in the game. And I mentioned, of course, the three Runic Bombs still on the table, and in fact looking for a fourth are the Olympus Bolt Stats. How many bombs is too many? Because right now, you know, the Olympus Bolts are going to be struggling to fit any war to their pockets. Double bomb for Jockin right now, but that does mean that they can threaten all of these phoenixes at once. You know, you, you could split in like a, a 3 1 1 situation. Two runic bombs for Jockey means whichever they step up to, it's literally two bombs and a basic attack to take down one of these phoenixes. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this is an army split off, possibly on their own, but more likely with the rest of their team as they just want to keep those in pocket and pressure them out. But I don't know, the Yomi Tanuki. Their advantage for this entire game has been through structures, and that still is the case with the two tier, tier two towers available. But every team fight just seems to not go their way. You know that they they had that again one moment, that one great fight in the right lane. But since then, the Olympus Bolts haven't really put a whole lot of steps wrong. You know, there's been a little bit of uh, difficulties, I think, for Impox on the Aphrodite to be tagged to the right target. Uh, we saw Sega stepped up high, and actually, the Undying Love came out without connecting to Hercules and. It's little things where maybe the Tanuki will have a window where there's not quite the coordination with this Aphrodite that you would maybe hope to see. But I don't know. The, the Tanuki is struggling to find it right now. And with only one Tier 2 tower standing, I expect these Phoenix fights to be coming up really, really soon. Well, that Tier 2 tower its not going to be standing for much, much longer. Judas, as the Olympus Bolts all. are targeting this left side structure here. Shoving forward to Sager, creating space for his team to grab that last tower on the map on the left-hand side. And, you know, if they find a little something-something extra with a, a great Earthbreaker and a little bit of an excavate situation, why Ooh. not? Emilito pulled into the team. No follow-up there from the Olympus Bolts. That could have been a great introduction to this base aggression here from the Olympus Bolts. Deathwalker First in bomb. on the Jockin, who's forced out. Moving forward to Sager through space and time used to just get into the Phoenix Pit. Meanwhile, Hedgehog is targeting Streak Up. Zero oh, no. takes out Hedgehog, and Hedgehog has died without taking out a priority target. That is an immediate retreat button for the Olympus Bolts. There was 15 seconds left on the Fire Giant buff, and still going to chase out of Yomi Tanuki. Sega might be in some trouble if they get locked down. Oh, not just a little trouble, a lot of trouble. Judas, connection, and th Zeros isn't there with the lockdown. Deathwalker moving forward, Sager yanking him forward. Oh, that's just so much healing. That is so obnoxious, Judas. Look, <laughs> Sager is at literally within five members of the Yomi Tsunuki. He's healed! Sager's at full <laughs> HP. That is so... Never mind. Olympus Bolts taking down the middle lane Phoenix. Hedgehog pays with it. For it, rather, with his life and the Primal Fury going to go the way of the Olympus Bolts as well to crack this gold lead and open to the tune of about 8k. I think the Bolts will be happy with that last fight actually getting a Phoenix, but it was really difficult for them actually. And, and getting the mid Phoenix is probably the one they least wanted to get. Uh, you know, it, it, it is a relatively easy Phoenix to defend. Uh, so, unfortunately, the Hedgehog did dive very, very deep. Didn't end up taking down a target, but maybe created the space necessary. It was two runic bombs, I think, on the mid Phoenix to eventually take it down. And you know, it, it's all well and good. I think I think the bolts can be happy. They they will be respawned in time to reset. Uh, they they are now you know, taking up their positions as the fire giant does spawn on in, and they have the biggest lead so far in the game, eight thousand gold, which they have managed to spend up and just about hitting full build now. Sega has been a bit of a menace on this Hercules, just. Again, like you mentioned, shoving forward non-stop. Fire Giant's been started up, and the to Yomi Tanuki need to get in there. Oh, the Yomi Tanuki are coming in. Sager's not dissuading them at all. Emilito shoving oh, forward as well it. onto the back line. And Jockin, Zero's falling low to Iport, but here comes Ice Ice to help out his mid laner streak up with the final shot over the top, takes up Iport, and that is the highest damage member of the Olympus Bolts. Wiped out of this oh, team by no. Jockin. Goes down, streak up, finds himself a double kill as well. Zero's is going to die to the Wrath of Hedgehog. Return kill, Emilito. Ice Ice had saved Oof. that Fear No Evil the entire fight. Sager going to be the next target, slowed down by Ice Ice. With all that obnoxious healing, it might be more helpful for the Yomi to back up, back up and take out that Fire Giant instead. Yeah, it, uh, I think the Yomi Tanuki are looking to see if they can end this game. It's going to be tough if they can't get through these last two players, and that will be enough to dissuade the Tanuki from diving. Although they may be looking at this Phoenix now. 
We'll see if they do decide to press on in. And it, it all just went wrong again for the Bolts. They, they could have committed onto this fire train. Again, two runic bombs in pocket, but instead they opt to drop the fight and lose the fight afterwards. It, it, it really didn't go well enough for them. They, they, they're playing with a swagger and a confidence right up until the Tanuki decide they want the fight. And oh, maybe showing no. a bit too much respect, but a great world written to Rage and Steel. Wow, immediately into the double silence. Sager dropping low to Ice Ice. The auto can't come through fast enough from Streak Up. Emilito getting dropped down from that boulder through Sager. But Iports made the rotation back in. Like I said, the most damage. And not even on the Olympus Bolts, but on this entire team. Iport is swinging. Iport being swinging. And when they can get their damage off, like we saw just there, right? That was on Sam Alito. That is quite a tanky target now. Still did a huge chunk of damage. And it, it, it's just a real shame for the Bolts that they weren't able to take that Fire Giant. Now, they have lost the right side Phoenix. Again, not the highest value Phoenix, but maybe slightly better than the mid lane Phoenix. So it, it's a relatively even map state, again, at this Fire Giant. Enhanced Fire Giant, of course. Both sides looking to make their window open, but... I don't know, the, the Bolts now they seem to have taken the knock back a bit and aren't, aren't quite playing with the confidence that they had been. You know, Sega was getting in the face and getting you know, really aggressive, just shoving into the enemy team. Now, not so much, you know, backing up, wants to play it carefully. The Hedgehog, though, not getting the message, steps up high, but makes, needs to make sure they don't get caught. And they have been caught by a silence. Oh, Hedgehog there with no beats, caught in the Fear No Evil, dash forward, Emilito off the mark with the ultimate, but streak up in the air to take out the jungler hedgehog ice ice might fall what? here to some portals Ooh. and some unstable vortexes from iport but a leap over now iport's kind of in a bad spot wow. streak up with the auto attacks and just a little bit too much commitment there from the olympus bolts they saw red and didn't come up with anything for it yeah you know what oh, you know what started all that that was emilito dropping a silence onto Hedgehog, who tried to use the ambush. Most jumps would be interrupted, but not go on cooldown. The ambush cooldown will trigger if you just get broken out of the silence, so, uh, of, of the invisibility, sorry. So once they got caught, that was it, too late. But now, Horace Sega wanted to step into this fire giant. I wonder if the Yomi Tanuki are gonna commit to this, because it gets a bit more complicated with a runic bomb on the table. Takir is tough from Impox and Sager, but Jokin is here with the Dark Portal. That could definitely take out a Man. Fire Giant. Sager dropping low. Yomi Tanuki ignoring the Fire Giant in lieu of this Hercules, but meanwhile, Ice What's Ice going on, on the back line taking out Jokin, but it doesn't. Jokin finds the kill rather on the Ice bolts. Ice. The bolts take down the Fire Giant. Zero's forced into the rewind, and the Yomi Tanuki have straight up thrown this Fire Giant attempt. And Pox might die for it, but who really cares? I mean, I, I, we just saw the fight coming through from Jockin onto Ice Ice there. Now, they, they have lost a few members. Whoa, through space and time trying to get lucky there. But, I mean, that Sega there playing exactly as we needed them to. Just get getting in to the pit, being aggressive, just being a nuisance, and that excavates such a threat. There is not a good secure on the side of the Yomi Tanuki, especially when Ice Ice is busy trying to deal with the rest of the team. But Sega, yet again, dashing in. Snags, Emilito, streak up in the air preemptively. Emilito's gonna be the target of Hedgehog's ultimate. Deathwalker is here to create a little bit of space for his support. And not That's only it. create space, Hedgehog goes down to the solo laner. Sager, meanwhile, dropping to the audio attacks from streak up. And what was originally an Olympus Bolts aggressive play just gets turned right on its head. The Yomi Tanuki take out two key members of the Bolts here, wiping Fire Giant off of Hedgehog and Sager. And I mean, the Olympus Bolts are just stepping up over and over and over just way too far unnecessarily far and they're getting punished for it sager again i uh, mentioned playing with confidence and it's great but you can't play with confidence in front of streak up streak up is the member of the yomi tanuki that you need to be frightened of because this rama just churns out damage non-stop and we see it now climbing up in the player damage charts second highest in the game only behind iport who's been throwing out hail marys across the map all game long and connecting plenty with them but it, it's it's tough for the bolts to take a split engagement right like that you know they dive deep but you can't do that into all five. You know, Sega's creating some space for the backline, but the backline weren't there. You know, Jokin had still fallen down, hadn't respawned yet. Hedgehog then wants to follow up, but Hedgehog, if they're only taking down one target, we mentioned before, the, the peel onto a single target is pretty decent from the Yomi Tanuki. It's hard for them to, you know, for the Hedgehog to actually get in and take out just one in the middle of five. You know, it's very rarely going to happen. We saw there, they get in, put out all their damage, 
De- onto some of it onto Emilito, some of it onto Death Walker, but Death Walker is still quite tanky, but does enough damage to take down the opposing jungler as well. Now, it's an awkward spot though for the Yomi Tanuki. They take the only Fury. They have only waves pushing down, but with all Phoenixes up, there's nothing anyone can really do. <laughs> We're going to take a moment, take a breather for everyone to reassess the situation, but 16 kills to 16 kills, 38 minutes in. This is, uh, well, literally as close as it gets. And I think as we approach this 40-minute mark here, Judas, I mean, I think the kill lines tell the story, right? The Yomi Tanuki have it spread, right? Throughout the kills, yes. deaths, it's spread throughout the entire team. The Olympus Bolts have front-loaded so much. I mean, they are relying on Hedgehog to find a key backline target. And it just hasn't been happening in these last couple of fights. Either it's the time stop from Kronos, it's Ice Ice with a good Fear No Evil. I mean, Hedgehog is getting annihilated in the back line, unable to find a priority kill. And then the Olympus Bolts, their game plan falls apart after that. They just have to back off. I mean, what adjustments can be made in, in these team fights? The Olympus, Olympus Bolts don't have to just rely on one member of their team to find a kill in order to take a W. I think the Olympus Bolts need to stop fighting five on five. I think Hedgehog can do their best work when they are one on one with an opponent and the way you do that is just by split pushing up for example the mid lane like we see them in now because because if they try to fight as a full five the Yomi Tanuki with the team fight composition will just do a better job of it and, and again for Hedgehog what makes it more difficult is when these fights are big explosive five on five team fight then like four minutes of waiting that means any relics that you burn just come back up in time you know and Hedgehog needs to get those relics off the table and then get back on in but speaking of getting on in the Olympus Bolts need to get into the pit because it's burning down fast. Oh, an immediate startup and an immediate burn from the Yomi Tanuki. That fire giant went down with some swiftness there. Deathwalker charging forward, grabbing Impox, who is targeted by Streak Up with those oh, powerful wow. auto attacks. As you mentioned, isn't able to find the final kill on Impox. Ice Ice charging forward there with the Fear No Evil. Hedgehog's in the back line, but it's a back line of five members of the Yomi Tanuki once again forced out, not even able to use. That ultimate there, Imolito taking a couple shots out of Jockin. And it's going to be a full disengage here from the Tanuki and the Bolts. But the Tanuki grab a Fire Giant for the trouble. A Pyromancer now on the table. Sager's not quite done with it. But the Yomi Tanuki are done with him. The Bolts still want to fight, it looks like. They're still trying to make some moves forward. But they can't catch up to anyone. And it's just the three members here need to be careful. Because Iport has been churning out the damage through this game. But you can't hit it consistently enough when the fights are so split like that, you know, iPort needs to be in a position where they are safe from Ice Ice. And Ice Ice has done a great job of targeting out this Yannis. When when you get when you can find a moment to keep Yannis in place, you take it. And can't kill off iPort solely, but you can do enough damage to put them under a lot of pressure. Now the purification beads entirely off the board for the Olympus Bolts who is looking to sneak around here. And Melito figures it out though. Able to charge forward, streak up an ice ice are here. Same thing goes for Deathwalker. Zero slagging. Just a little bit far behind, but with that movement speed buff on the second ability, he'll be there uh, before too long. Through space and time, <laughs> you very defensively there from iPort. I did not expect the Olympus Bolts to be that terrified of the Yomi Tanuki. I mean, they should be. It, it's a full five on five. Like I said, they should be avoiding. And the Yomi Tanuki have Fire Giant on five. Enhanced Fire Giant at that. So, understandable, you want to get out. You don't want to get picked up before this Phoenix defense. But they're not quite in position just yet. Again, the Yomi Tanuki opting to send a full five man down the left strategy. And this time might work a bit better because the Purification Beat situation is looking dire for the Bolts. Actives completely burn on the side of the Olympus Bolts, which means these high CC abilities are going to hit. First Look one lands that. on the Jockin and Sager into immediate double fear no evil there from Ice Ice. Perfect chain CC there from the Yomi Tanuki. Final shot on the Jockin from the Astral Arrows. Oh! But Ice Ice with a triple kill over the Whoa. top. Here comes Ice Ice with a quad. Give it Get to it. him one Get more. The fifth. Yes. Ice Ice with a five piece. Impox takes that Ice Ice on the back end. But the Yomi Tanuki take game one. Just like that, five kills in a row. Ice Ice comes on in, absolutely massive for their team, but it went exactly as we would have expected. Deathwalker hits a huge whirlwind of rage and steel into the huge Fear No Evil as well, and there was nothing that the Bolts could do about it. And just like that, Ice Ice goes from what well, we comment, had to comment on the fact they've done such low player damage. If you end the, with a, end the game with a Pender kill, I can't imagine you'll be too upset by that. 
straight up zero to hero, man. Ice Ice quiet on the map for near what felt like 15 or 20 minutes and yep. swings it on home with a five player D aside. And immediately the Yomi Tanuki take game number one here. I don't even know where to start with this one. I mean, it was Bolts, it was Tanuki, it was Bolts again, it was Tanuki again, it was Bolts, and then it was Tanuki, and then they won the game. I mean, <laughs> you're the chair too, Judas. You take it away. I mean, how do I describe it? It was just something that the Bolts weren't able to finish off when you have this composition that is you know, heavily focused around single target kills, like we see Hedgehog getting with 10 kills there. When you come up against a full team fight based team, just like that, you know, the, the World Rage of Steel into the Fear No Evil, that's the game plan for the Yomi Tsunuki from minute one. As soon as those ultimates are available, they'd be looking to make that connection. And well, they made it happen. They made the connection under the Phoenix where it all mattered. They take it down, take the Titan down, and they'll be more than happy coming into this second game with a 1 0 lead. Well, as the two worst teams in the league, I mean, clearly these two teams are pretty evenly matched. It was back and forth all game long. You're feeling pretty good. Is this a compositional difference that needs to be addressed, or is it just a little bit more experience on the side of the Tanuki, knowing exactly how their comp plays and just waiting for the perfect minute mark to execute it? It, it's tough to say because the composition, it would be very disingenuous to say it wasn't working for them. You know, they were finding all of the advantage. They were getting out pressured across the map, particularly with the objectives brought by the Obi Tanuki. You know, they were taking down these towers to keep that gold lead from getting too crazy. But then, like you said, I, I think playing that sort of composition, especially in these late game stages, and, you know, we're talking 40 minute stages, you they probably don't have a whole lot of practice to the bolts. And when you have, you know, a late game Aphrodite, it's very important who you are tagged to. When you're a hedgehog on the circuit, it's very important to play around the fact that you won't be having a full five on five engagement. Or what do you do about that? You know, I, I can't really give the answer. You know, do do you just split push? Do you try to store things out? It's very difficult to to actually assess, and that'll have to be what the bolts do. But I don't think they have to change too much, and they they could even run that back again. I think if you play that game. A second time, exact same compositions. We could well see a Bolts victory. So nothing to be disheartened about, but maybe a couple of changes to be made. And Judas, we have to remember here, neither one of these teams are making it to Masters, right? This is, yes. in essence, this is for glory. This is for a little bit of pride, right? To not be yeah. the worst team in the SEC. But it's also a little bit of practice before SOC relegations. But the Bolts are going to have to take it back to the drawing board for game number two. Going to toss it to a real quick break. Stick around. You're going to want to see game two.
Sanctuary. Howdy folks, welcome back into the Smite Challenger Circuit. This is the European edition. It is week five before Smite Masters. Dimes here, chair one and a for you. I got my pal Judas taking things home on the analysis side. And in game number one, we saw a back and forth slobber knocker, Judas. I mean, that thing was crazy. It was gold yep. lead switching back and forth the entire game. And a sweet, sweet pentakill on the back of Ice Ice's Hunbots in the jungle brought it home for the Yomi Tanuki. I mean, we've already talked about the game. We've already talked a little bit about adjustments that need to be made. But what can the Olympus Bolts really focus on to try to bring it back to a game three? I think uh, the Bolts should focus on the fact that both these two teams, as we mentioned, zero and four coming into this game week. <laughs> Not ideal. Totally evenly matched, it looks like, through that game. And the Bolts need to play that way. It, it, it felt like sometimes the Bolts were like, oh, they don't want to fight us. Let's get them. Let's get them. And they, that's when the Bolts would get aggressive. And then as soon as... The Yomi Tanuki felt like, oh, we can take this fight. The Bolts kind of got a bit nervous, like, oh, they want to fight? That means maybe we shouldn't want to fight. They should feel confident. If they want to go for it, I think they should go for it. And I hope they can adjust that in game two. Well, game two starts with picks and bans, Judas, which is what we're heading to right now. And we flew through picks and bans in game number one. It felt like both of these squads knew exactly where their compositions were headed. Yep. I'm curious if the Olympus Bolts might slow down a little bit, maybe take it uh, a little bit more carefully, or if they are... You know, just as confident and sure in their game plan here in game two as Sernanos and Vamana taking off the board here. Yeah, I, I think we saw a lot of focus onto the ADCs last game, and here we go again. The Bolts banning a few more out, and I, I, I do wonder why that is because, you know, Streaker picked up the Rama early on and looked great on it. You know, uh, ended up near top of the player damage shots, might have even been top by the end of the game. Uh, I don't know. I was still busy looking at Ice Ice getting the pentakill. Uh, but you know, you know, it, it almost doesn't matter too much which ADC you ban away. So I'm almost surprised. Maybe the bolts just opting to leave a lot open 
and uh, they're looking to, to pick up this Aphrodite again. I, again, oh I can't say God. it went bad for them. I right. think there was a little bit of inexperience towards the end and how exactly you want to play this god in the later stages. But for the most part, it went well. And there were even still some big moments from Impox on this uh, on this Afro. So not too surprised to see them take it back. But Yomi Tanuki now not going to be fooled. We'll be uh, sure what's coming up ahead. And again, locking that uh, ADC nice and early. And Deathwalker wants to run back the Xing Chen. I, I, I don't hate it. Well, notably here, Judas, the Sir Cat taken off the board by the Yomi Tanuki. I think it's yes. very important to point that out. Hedgehog had his absolute way with the Yomi Tanuki. I mean, up to, what, 30 minutes or so before yep. the Yomi Tanuki really started to adjust him attacking the back line. Sir Cat taken off the board, which means we're going to see Hedgehog on something new here. But that also means that the Chernobog wasn't banned. Well, that's the fire some Yomi must Tanuki as well. And it's going to be the Heimdall. In return for the bolts, that's a powerful Our deed shall be written in legend. Ball. And the bolts electing to not go back hmm. to Sager's Hercules, which is kind of curious to me because it felt like Sager was having plenty of success on the control side of things with that pick. Yeah, it was was aggressive at pretty much every stage. Uh, stole an enhanced fire giant. Mm -hmm. Th that's a pretty big win in my book. Um, maybe opting to go for with, with this Guan Yu now. What this does change about the bolts previous composition is it does now mean that they are a little bit more team fight oriented you know they can have these this big cc chains coming through even if sure. it is still mainly on a single target you can sustain backup with the guan yu and the aphrodite so if the fights go long which they did previously all of a sudden you're in a bit of a better spot but a zeus coming through for the yomi tanuki we've mm -hmm. seen a little bit of zeus in the spl i think specifically Venenu has been taking this pick and I think it's won every game on it too. It's looked really good. Now Zeros had the Kronos available, opted not to go for it, instead go for Zeus and you know, maybe wanted to have an explosive impact in this second game. Uh, explosive it, it will be with that, that third ability bringing down the lightning storm or uh, I guess detonating the lightning storm. There's Changa and Dodgy taking off the board, couple of support Chunga. picks. For the Olympus bolts going the way of the uh, the grayscale there, Sylvanas being hovered here Brody, by the Yomi Tanuki. It's going to be a lock in for Imolito, not a pick that we've seen all too often. But I'm most curious about this next pick coming from the Tanuki. Are we going to see yeah. the Hun bots run back for Ice Ice? I think a Zeus Hun bots combination could be absolutely lethal. Yeah, it could potentially be, and it, it does also depend on what Hedgehog's going to pick up. Sylvanas, of course, type of support that can be focused out similarly to how Emilito was in the first intrude, game. Sylvanas even it. less safe than Nox, but Kali coming through. Similar style for Hedgehog, where you want to be taking off a single target, but has that late game pop-off potential, right? Could go absolutely nuts later on. Discordia comes out now, too, for iPort, not going for the Giannis. Looks like it might be a Thor coming through. It's, it's, it's a strange set of drafts yet again, but I'm, I'm sure there's, there's there's plenty to go for here. It's just quite tough to see it just now. I think there's plenty to talk about here, but I think, Judas, that we should talk about it in-game. I think we should just hop right into game number two as soon as possible Sense here. To me. But, I mean, this... Hmm. I, I've got some <laughs> questions to You'll ask about... I've got this... The, the reason I look so perplexed is Hedgehog on this Kali. Uh, yeah. We saw Hedgehog from, from minute 5 to minute 25 run the game. I mean, literally run the game. Yeah. The entirety of it. This Kali is almost the exact opposite, where it's got to be minute 25 before the Kali starts <laughs> to run the game. And I just, I loved Hedgehog in that early game controlling pick. I'm just I'm kind of perplexed as to why the Olympus Bolts went this way. I think it might not be as effective, but if the bolts can play a similar style where you are being the ones aggressive, invading buffs, and, you know, putting pressure on all sides of the map, if, if you can get this Kali to a position like the Sir Cat was in, all of a sudden, you've skipped that early phase where, where Hedgehog's not going to be so strong and... Wow, blinking in gets the beads immediately from Zeros. I, I, I think Hedgehog's just answered the question <laughs> there, Dimes. <laughs> I think if you play as aggressively as you did previously, Hedgehog could maybe see this pick do some work. Certainly, and the same thing goes for Ice Ice. I, I mentioned the, the lethal combination of the Hunbots 
and the Zeus ultimate, right? Two big yes. circles, drop them, scatter a team fight, whatever. Same thing could be said for uh, for this Thor, right? You dunk in, you get some great chain CC, you lock down a target like the Aphrodite of Zeros. Once again, oh. getting knocked down by Hedgehog just off the mark. Who with that stun in place there is Ipor. That would have been first blood for sure, and especially if you can get a call Lee running with first blood, that's exactly what you're looking for. Meanwhile, <gasps> Impox, speaking of first blood, oh. streak up. Takes down the Aphrodite on the left-hand side of the map pre-two minutes. And that is a great start for the Yomi Tanuki who want to get things revved up here in game two. Yeah, that's a really early first one. Oh, catches the stun, actually, onto the hammer. Now, I say should be fine because Hedgehog kind of just slapping with those blades right now. But uh, it, it's a real shame for the bolts that they don't pick up the first blood, especially having put so much pressure onto Zeros. I, I get the feeling Zeros might be the target of Kali. Something's, something's just telling me that. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a sixth sense. Maybe it's something else. But, uh, you know, when, when you're putting that much pressure in the middle lane, it, it feels rough to drop a kill in the dual lane. And that just comes down to the pressure that Sylvanas puts out. You know, we mentioned we didn't see too much of this god. Uh, funny, I actually saw them last night on the NASCC, and one of the things we made note of there is that the uh, Wisps coming through and actually healing the minion wave now for sure. Sylvanas, it, it does make a big difference, you know. It, it does mean that pretty much no one can stand up to the pressure that uh, uh, Sylvanas can put out. And, you know, with, with Heimdall, Aphrodite on the side of the bolts, it's not a fantastic amount of pressure and wave clear. You know, they are slow, and Unfortunately, there for, for Impox just gets <coughs> caught a little bit too high and unfortunately fell down for this first blood. But Ice Ice and Hedgehog been watching each other all the way along and uh, surely making a play here on these first blue buff spawns. Deathwalker and Ice Ice making the rotation here into the enemy side of the map looking for this blue buff, but it's just going to be turned right around by the Olympus Bolt. So, for all intents and purposes, uh, both solo laners have secured their respective <gasps> blue buffs in a way. Is in and speeds <laughs> also invading here against iport gets it and grabs it as well it seems like the yomi tanuki are really ratcheting up the pressure here in game number two yeah uh, the, the yomi tanuki are playing more uh more forward than we saw them in previously uh and i think that's that's the way the way they need to go about it they, they don't need to be you know completely aggressive but jockey getting aggressed on yeah and isn't in the crystal Jockey getting slowed as well. A dash forward from Streak up. A couple more autos is going to finish off the Hunter. Can't quite find them. Jockey's going to survive for a little bit longer. And curious to me. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh okay. dear. Not surviving a little bit longer. I eat my words. Judas, as the duo lane has 100% of the fatalities in game number two here. Jockey held his beads the entire time. I did hold the bees. I'm not sure what, if the bees would have helped too much. So I, I did figure out. Uh, well, I did figure that that was just going to be a quick, uh, you know. Oh, wow, it actually steals the red buff of the wall. Ice eyes over the wall. Um, oh, but I, I, I just figured that Jockin was going to stand in the crystal, teleport on away, and be fine. But I, I'm not sure where that crystal was placed. They, they weren't quite on the position they needed to be. And you know, they, they turned what should have been a, you know, pretty much nothing situation into another kill in the duel lane and. Emilito having a great time on the Sylvanas. Maybe maybe people need to look at this guy a little bit more because the pressure has been good. Gets a green buff invade, then makes the way over, to, gets a kill in duel lane. Sylvanas is a bit of a menace, but Hedgehog want to do something about it. Can't fight anything. It's, look at the look at the damage that Emilito is doing right now. What what an absolute phenom on the Sylvanas. That's so obnoxious, dude. Imagine if if Emilino had gone the mannequin scepter route. <laughs> on, on the Sylvanas and just burning Hedgehog with every single of those AoE autos thrown out. And now at level 6 for Ice Ice, level 5 just getting ticked over for Hedgehog, level lead in the jungle. Obviously Streakum is going to have a level lead with that early first blood. The Yomi Tanuki are getting rolling very quickly here in game number 2. And I keep coming back to that because, I mean, you look at th this combination, this lethal combo of Hedgehog and Impox, right? The the Kali stuck to the Aphrodite. It's been fantastic for years and years and years for a reason because you have an unstoppable murder machine in Kali that literally won't be able to die with the Aphrodite ult. But if you can't get that combination online because the Tanuki snowball so quickly, could be a quick curtains here in game number two. Uh, we said Hedgehog would be looking to play aggressive, but can't do it because Deathwalker and Ice Ice are doing that as well. Emilito going nuts, dumping uh, everything onto Iport. There's a ton of damage in the process. What? They have the nature's grasp, will not. But look at it. It's just, just running 
Riot, not even getting anything off that, but the damage on iPod is so great, they have to return to base, and that's just how the Tanuki are playing it. On, on the left side, it's all Emelito, but on the right side, Deathwalker and Ice Ice are stripping so much jungle away from Hedgehog that they can't be this aggressive force that they were looking for. I actually went for the Jotun's Wrath. Why didn't you get aggressive? There's Jokin doing exactly what they wanted to do in the first fight, but didn't go their way, so maybe learning that lesson a bit in this duo lane. It, 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 it's all... It's all going the way of the Tanuki right now, and I do wonder how the Bolts will contend with it, because they don't have that Kronos coming through to maybe push down some towers, but at least they have this uh, unstoppable murder machine, as you mentioned, because Kali and Aphrodite, if they can get to that stage, will quite literally be unstoppable. Judas, tell me about early objective play here, as Deathwalker and Sager are going to exchange ultimates in the solo lane. I look at this combination of streak up Emilito and Zeros, and I just see objectives evaporating in the blink of an eye i mean we just saw emilito almost <laughs> solo eye port in that green buff steal there do you think early gold furies early pyromancers things of that nature are on the table for the yomi tanuki and if so what can the bolts do to counter it i think the tanuki should be looking to pull these fights uh pull these objectives but maybe not take the fight if unnecessary because zeros by far has the best secure on the game uh this this uh you know the detonate will be whoa, hold on a second streak up to get going in i think they're going for this oh absolutely with emilito wow. right around the corner i'm gonna call that fantastic a solo for streak up i don't think emilito even touched jockin on this left hand side it's gonna be a second kill for the adc and a third kill for the adc squad the yomi tanuki and once again the gas pedal just keeps getting pressed but you were saying judas I, I, I was saying that I'm not sure the Yomi Tanuki have the early game composition to fight, but the objective burn and secure is pretty good. Uh, you, what what you would maybe struggle with is that that the uh, the fight afterwards would be difficult with all the cooldowns gone. But I say it's looking to blow a cooldown onto Hedgehog here. Off the mark there with the Anvil of Dawn. Hedgehog with plenty of mobility. Ice Ice just forced to use that Yonis attunement to get out of dodge here. Sayer and Hedgehog are following up. Meanwhile, Iport dies to the Wrath of Streak Up. Ice Ice pays for it, and the Olympus Bolts find the first kill of their game. But the, the middle lane wide open now as Iport falls to Streak Up, who's progressed to 3 0 with a three level lead in the duo lane. Yeah, this green buff just belongs to the Yomi Tanuki, despite it being on the side of the Olympus Bolts. And, you know, I, th I think. We saw iPort recognize, oh, hey, you know, uh, I, I keep getting contested by Amelito, but I'm not really going to die to the Sylvanas. Well, this time, not only do they bring Zeros over, they also bring Streak up, and that just makes all the difference. You know, that extra bit of damage that, that Amelito wasn't able to provide themselves can just be given by someone else. Now, interesting to see Ice Ice trying to get aggressive on the Hedgehog, though, on that right side, that Anvil of Dawn. You know, an ability best used for ganking lanes, of course, because you can show up out of nowhere. In the jungle, not so easy because the pathing that your your target will take is much less obvious. You know, they, they have some narrow pathways, but they've got about three of those narrow pathways, and any one of them is legitimate. So I, I'm surprised to see that, and Ice Ice, you know, rightly punished for it uh, with the aggression coming out. It's a shame for the bolts that Hedgehog didn't pick up that kill, but it did go on to Sega, and Sega needed that somewhat because I've been under some pressure in this solo lane. So it's not... You know, it's completely out, out, out of the realm of the, the bolts here, though they are still in this fight and still have that Kali. You always got to remember, and I'm sure they'll be talking about this right now, that we still have Kali. They can still scale later on. But you can only scale later on if you're not too far behind. Jock oh. and pulled out of the, the, the Bifrost. And I mean, it's just wow. as easy as that. Look look at how Emelito's been playing this. God, man, it's it, it's crazy. It's like, like, why am I not seeing more Sylvanas? <laughs> this, this just looks so much fun. The Sylvanas confirmed counter behind all there. I mean, that <laughs> yeah. was, I'm not sure if I've ever seen a, a, that was just filthy. The yank out of the Bifrost, especially yeah. I could feel Jogan's heart sink because he's like, oh, I'm safe. Like, I'm out. I'm free. And then Emilito says, absolutely not. And just <laughs> yoinks him out of it, finds the kill there. And this combined, I mean, the duo lane has all five kills for the side of the Yomi Tanuki. Yeah. A four level lead now for Streak Up, who's just running away. Uh, with the level advantage and a gold advantage here. Got that Executioner's Axe on live Jock and Force under the Tier 2 tower in 10 minutes. And I'm just curious, Judas, how Emilito and Streak are going to transition this lead to the rest of the map. It's it's difficult for Emilito to have this same impact when you're not fighting in these lanes, right? Now, they haven't managed to impact the green buff on sure. the enemy side, so that, that's already one step. But for, for Streak Up, you know, having that living nightmare, just being able to teleport to anywhere on the map and be able to get involved in the fights, that's going to make a big difference. Because 
you know, we're seeing a four level lead, now only a three level lead for Streak Up Over Jockey. But it, when you're so strong, a, a, everyone's going to feel that impact. You know, they're higher level than Sega, uh, higher level than uh, iPort as well. It, it does mean that this Chernobyl box is going to hit really, really hard. And, you know, it, it'll only need to be a couple of shots. Even just the ultimate is enough for now. The goal is being taken as well by the Yomi Tanuki, and th there's just nothing the Bolts can do about it. This dual lane for the Tanuki have been so strong, and like you said, five kills so far, the rest of the map hasn't had to do anything, and if the Bolts can't slow down, it's pressure on this left-hand side, they're really going to pay the price. Just past 11 minutes here, call it 11 and a half, and already the Yomi Tanuki have accumulated about a 4,000 gold lead over their opponents in the Olympus Bolts, which is a far cry from game number one where we saw pretty much level and gold parity through uh, half of the game, you know, into 20 minutes. And we're already, you know, split that time in half here. And the Yomi Tanuki have an, amassed a significant lead for themselves. And that lead is going to be extended here, taking the Pyromancer. Zero's dropping the ultimate just to make sure that it goes the way of the Tanuki there. Sager doesn't have any impact on that objective. And now, I mean, Towers gone on the left hand side one tower tier one tower gone on the left hand side for the olympus bolts tier one tower about half hp getting pressured here in the middle lane right side of the map so far death walker and sager have kind of stalled this lane out as they're both level 12 but it's only a matter of time really before the yomi tanuki decide hey we're high enough level we have enough items let's just group as five and run down some of these objectives and of course death walker on the jing chan having a guardian in the solo does tend to scale a little bit better than warriors so if the game does go longer again you know they they there will be death walker to come online later and you know, ha hasn't even been involved just yet but still great start for the yomi tanuki and we saw both objectives go down fast there and i imagine they have the burn and if they commit all of their abilities onto these objectives they burn down really quickly and it would be difficult for the tanuki to take a fight after the fact so they just set up a position where they don't need to. They've had so much pressure on the left-hand side. Jokin has had no means of stepping up, which means Impox can't step up alone as an Aphrodite. That's you know, half the kit wasted, basically. So all of a sudden, there's no steel potential. The best secure goes the way of Zeros. They can you know, peacefully walk up, take an objective. Emelito's charging down at iPort at every opportunity. So iPort feels like they have to stay on the tower as well. Nice triple bounce comes through. Onto Ice Ice there, and Iport in some training danger. Ice Ice using that Aegis to immune the ultimate there from Iport. Detonate comes out from Zeus. Takes a chunk of damage there away from the Discordia. And once again, the Omi Tanuki secure that green buff for themselves. You said it yep. earlier, they own it. It is now their buff, officially stamp it. Yomi Tanuki owns the left side green buff. <laughs> and the Embus Bolts have absolutely no choice but to give it up there. But with a moment of respite here, Judas, both Pyromancer and Gold Fury down. Not seeing any tower pushes for the moment. Do the Yomi Tanuki, I mean, what is their next step to really shove this lead? The Olympus Bolts don't really have, you know, they just have to farm up and kind of cross their fingers that the Tanuki uh, make a make a kind of a mishap play. But what is the next step for the Tanuki to really blow this thing over? Well, the way that Tanuki want to do this, it, it's the all-important Fire Giant, right? Especially if you can get it, you know, sub-20 minutes, which, you, which would be a very early Fire Giant in itself. But you don't want to rush things, right? You don't want to give any sort of opportunity. I, I think we actually saw an ultimate come through from yep. Isis. Then there it goes. Smashing down on a Hedgehog. He uses the beads. Tons of damage coming out from the Whoa! Zeus. And Hedgehog just getting the ultimate off in time to survive that final de detonation there from Zeros. But uh, a trade for... Jungle, jungle, ultimate. But look at this left-hand side here. As Jockin's a little bit out of sorts. Here comes Streak Up, dashing in with that Living Nightmare. Locked down into Jockin, forces the beads. And Jockin has to blow their entire kit. Everything. Just to survive. I mean, everything. Ultimate. You've got the teleport there from the Bifrost. Beads, ages, everything. Just to survive a single game. Yeah, uh, it, it's tough for Jockin. They, they cannot step up too high. And Heim... Uh, as much as Haim is probably the safest hunter in the game, you can only be so safe. You know, there is a maximum on safety. But one thing I wanted to see from the Tanuki before they can get set up for these fire giant pushes is actually taking down these remaining tier one towers. Now, we do see sure. Deathwalker proxy farming on the right hand side should mean that, uh, that this tier one tower on the right will go down. And that does leave the mid lane open, but a fight in the mid lane instead. Dashing forward here is both the solo laner Sager and Hedgehog. Zero's falling low, able to get the ultimate off, but doesn't find any huge targets with it. 
The kill on the Hedgehog, that's going to pay dividends here as we get into the middle of this game. It's even in the jungle, 14 to 14. Oh, ice Ice up in the air, wait for it, smashing down Man. into Jockin, who's just way out of position for absolutely no reason there. Impox is the next target. Locked down from the Thor. Shots coming out from Streak, but great oh, pull in there from Emilito. Who's made the rotation? It's Deathwalker, who catches the Aphrodite in that whirlwind. Able, isn't able, rather, to put the finishing touches on that kill, but Jockin goes down after a, a bit of a, a lapse in judgment there. Yeah, dropped the uh, Bifrost Crystal up high. I I'm not quite certain why. Uh, I guess it does keep the cooldown low, but you know, when when, when you're in that position, I don't, I don't think there's ever a situation where you want to be teleporting into the tier one tower in the enemy mid lane. Emily to again being a menace on this left-hand side. There's something about this left-hand side that just goes so well for the Tanuki. Oh, Slow comes out there, locking down Hedgehog. No ultimate available for the Kali, and it's going to be a matter of time before Streak up. Sends those devastating crystals into the body. All right. Chog finds another one for themselves. Meanwhile, the Olympus Bolts grab a Pyromancer on the right-hand side. Yeah, I think you might be happy with that trade, you know? It was only the one kill that Hedgehog had so far and has actually built up the Vital Amplifier, which I love to see. It's tough to gauge the actual impact of this item, but it does feel really good when you start hitting people and then you start healing and then you start hitting people them faster <laughs> and for more damage. It's great on Kali. But it still has to come off, you know. It's interesting the the build choice the Hedgehog has gone for here with with a with a pen cooldown style. You know, is able to leap more often, get the stuns off more often, get that blood lash to trigger the uh, the uh, vital amplifier as well. So I, I I don't hate it. It's somewhat unusual. It looks like building into some crit to round out the draft as well. Uh, run of the whole entire build and. It might be something that that the uh, hedgehog can pull out here. It, it seems to be someone experienced on this god, you know, has maybe done some experimenting. But it, it's going to be tough to pull it off because we've seen how well the Yomi Tanuki can fight as a five, and how they're keeping track of cooldowns. You know, hedgehog gets engaged on onto the left hand side, and the the Yomi Tanuki were aware that they could commit to that because they saw the ultimate burn from hedgehog. You know, had to use that destruction to stay alive from the detonate. So. I don't know how this Kali's going to manage to pop off, but still keeping relatively even does keep this game particularly interesting. It is only a 6k gold lead, which is a healthy lead for the Yomi Tanuki, but it's nothing, you know, too great for the Olympus Bolts either. You know, they're, they're not going to be happy with it. But if you do have a Kali, you can be okay to say, well, right, we can turn that around pretty quickly in just one team fight. But. It's, it seems like the Yomi Tanuki is struggling to find any more aggression. You know, they, they've they've spread out across the map now, but instead it looks like it's going to be the Bolts getting aggressive on the Deathwalker, who's just jumped in place. Deathwalker low, already half HP as Hedgehog makes the rotation over, locked down. The Sager, oh, but here comes streak up. streak up across the entire map with that living nightmare. Sager finds one under the Deathwalker, leaping out. Oh, Hedgehog no. And streak up finds two. A double shot there. From the Hunter who progresses to 6 0 and 3 here in game number two. You just can never, ever forget about the global impact from the Chernobog. Remember when you asked how uh, Streak Up's going to impact on the rest of the map? Exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> One bit of aggression, and that's that's the first real engage we've seen from the Bolts, right? That's the first time they've tried to commit heavily on that right hand side, and all of a sudden, Streak Up's there. The tower is churning out damage. It, it, it's just too difficult to take down Deathwalker. Now, they did manage to kill off the Xing Chen this time, but it, when it takes so much of a commitment, and I don't know where to go, surely actually oh. will turn it around onto Aizai. So that's a small win for the Bolts, but you know, it, it, it's just not easy anywhere. You know, if this Kali's not killing someone quickly, they might still get them, but that, that destruction, of course, it does keep... Uh, Hedgehog alive for some time, but didn't get the reset on the heal because Deathwalker actually died to Sega. Now, I don't know if uh, Deathwalker was actually the target of Hedgehog, but it would have been pretty handy if Deathwalker was. Unfortunately, they're not able to get the reset. And again, the map is open for the Yomi Tanuki to look at this fire giant. They've taken the right side tier two now for the old Olympus Bolts, and that just leaves only the mid lane as a safe haven right now. And even that tower's not looking too healthy. So as soon as Zeros is comfortable in lane, already level 19, almost level 20, almost has the Rod of Tehuti finished up as well, I, I think we're going to see some some involvement from Zeros finally. Because the Zeus has been quiet, but you know the, the, there's a reason that there's the saying, the calm before the storm. You know, we're, we're at 20 minutes here, Judas, and we're getting to that point in the game 
where you know streak has got this four level lead he's got a, a you know two items or about an item a dominance over jockin here in the duo lane but we're getting to that point in the game where that's be gonna become less and less crucial as the yomi tanuki take down the pyromancer there and slowly jockin's gonna be able to shore that lead up and the olympus bolts are gonna draw closer to parity with the yomi tanuki and this lead is gonna start evaporating Right, so I mean, the Yomi Tanuki are on a clock here. It, it's they have a time limit to push this streak up lead and, and to really take advantage of the map. They do have a time limit, especially with Akali on the other side of the, the team. But they have actually been doing the right things with that time limit. You don't have to rush. If your time limit's thirty minutes, twenty nine fifty nine is within the time limit. You know, sure. they they can still take the time that they do have to work with, and they can make it work. Now they've taken the objectives that they need. Uh, they've again. Pulled down the Pyromancer, pulled down this Gold Fury, extended that Gold Lead even further. Uh, and you know, at some point, they're going to turn their attention to this uh, Fire Giant now. Hedgehog in some trouble, has to burn the Destruction just once to get the tower, get some gold for their team. Hedgehog surely falling down, though. And yeah, even with a commitment from Ice Ice, it, it, it's just, again, opening up more and more space. And I actually think that the Obi Tanuki are going to look for this Fire Giant now. I, I don't understand that at all. We're going to talk about that for sure, Judas. Uh, but <laughs> the Yomi Tanuki start up this Fire Giant with Hedgehog in the ground for another 30 seconds and not and, and nary a peep here from the Olympus Bolts on the right side of the map. The Yomi Tanuki are going to freely confirm this Fire Giant. Meanwhile, the Olympus Bolts just try to take what they can on the left side of the map, try to grasp at whatever straws are left on the map. Tier 2 Tower goes down for the Bolts, but they're going oh, to be traded out with a, 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 a Phoenix on the right side of the map here. Streak up, Emilito and Deathwalker are charging down this right-hand lane with a full wave of minions. Grab off the mark there from Emilito. It's Iport and Sager against the three members of the Yomi Tanuki. But here come Ice Ice and Zeros marching down the middle lane to join the rest of their team. Yeah, it's looked like Yomi Tanuki, they're not committing to the right side Phoenix push, but just seeing if they can catch the bolts napping. Uh, bolts were equal to it. They were aware of the potential for that to go through, so did rush to the aid of that Phoenix, but leaves the mid lane tier 1 wide open. Now the tier 2 under some pressure. Zeros hasn't even gotten up to this fight yet, and Deathwalker's going in. Deathwalker in. Ipor dropping down to half HP. Impox not blowing the ultimate, holding it for just a little bit longer, but Iport using the beats to escape the CC from Deathwalker. Hedgehog wrapping Man. around the back, has got that crit item fully online. Deathwalker charging forward once again. Here comes Sager, though, looking to create some space for the Olympus Bolts to move in. Zero still holding on to that ultimate. Hedgehog in the back line. Here comes Ice Ice. He's in the air. Who's the target? Smashing down on wow. Jockin and Impox, burning the beats and allowing the rest of the Yomi Tanuki to move into this Phoenix pit. Bird goes down. There's the thing of breaking the base open right there. Ice Ice just kicked the whole door down. Just charges on in. Make sure that that Phoenix goes through because it was looking oh. good for the bolts, but the fight carries on. Oh, great knock of immunity there from Sager. Hedgehog. Comes out. Zeros falling low. Hedgehog has joined the fray as well. Zeros is the target. Zeros goes down to Impox. Deathwalker getting chunked down by Hedgehog. Meanwhile, Sager's on the horse. Streak oh. up. Forced into the Aegis there, immunes the damage from Iport. A couple of shots are going to return a kill onto the mid laner, but it's a trade all for all. Imolito between a rock and a hard place here. Ice Ice find Hedgehog in the back line, but four members of the Yomi Tanuki are going to drop for a single Phoenix. It's great that the Yomi Tanuki did die for that mid lane Phoenix because they almost got nothing for that entire engagement. And Emilito will go down. Ice Ice has gone up into the sky. Oh, no! three man dunk out of Ice Ice only extends the life of Emilito for a second and ends up giving his own life over to the Olympus Bolts as well. Bit of a circumspect play there from Ice Ice, and it's going to be a full-on deicide. Yeah, finally, the, the fight ends. It was a long extended engagement, but the Bolts, I think, would come away quite happy to only lose a mid lane Phoenix there. You know, we mentioned in game number one, this mid lane Phoenix is not too difficult to defend, uh, and, and getting a full deicide means that, you know, the Fire Giant, which was about to fall off, has now completely disappeared from the Yoni Tanuki, and finally, Bolts can get an objective of their own. I think this will be their second Pyromancer of the game, so they'll have a Runic Bomb in the pocket of Jokin and Sega. This does again. It opens up the window for the Fire Giant to be contested, because Detonate from Zeros was uncontestable through the kit on the Olympus Bolts, but that's exactly what the Runic Bomb is here to do. If you can dump two Runic Bombs somewhat simultaneously, that will be a, a potential steal for the bolts. Now, the Yomi Tanuki have had all the pressure on the map. They still 
have the advantage in the map state and still an advantage in gold. It has shrunk slightly, but now that they are coming up to those full build stages across the board, it, it's not quite going to be irrelevant. But, you know, that, that timer that you mentioned earlier is, is getting a bit short. And the Primal Fury will make things easier. You know, the Yomi Tanuki now have a bit more increased damage. Zeros will be hitting for a ton onto this Fire Giant, but still can't out-secure a Runic Bomb. So it all depends on if the Bolts can actually gain this territory and feel like they're in a position to contest the fight. But with Ice Ice on the Thor, Anvil of Dawn is, should be enough to create some space. Sega's looping around the backside, but there's, that's no backside. That's still the front side because the Yomi Tanuki are looping around the back as well. And... When this fight kicks off, this is again about as equal as the bolts have been all game. Kali finally coming online. We'll have to see if they can finally make this fight work. Well, look at the damage charts there. 17k for iPort. This Discordia has got to go down for the Yomi Tanuki if they want to make anything happen. Deathwalker getting some protection shredded away the there by Sager. Oh, what a great lightning strike and a detonate there. Jockin falling to under half HP. He's going to have some heals from Impox to get right back up to full HP. Same thing goes for Sager. Some more obnoxious combination healing <laughs> from the Olympus Bolts. It was Aphrodite and Hercules in game number one, and now it's Aphrodite and Guan Yu who provides more team healing for the entirety of the Olympus Bolts. Deathwalker has made the rotation to protect this middle lane here. I port targeted out by Ice Ice, doesn't connect with the hammer. Sager moving forward here. It's Emilito getting locked down. It's Emilito getting targeted. Deathwalker trying to find some CC with that whirlwind on the Olympus Bolts. And meanwhile, on the Hedgehog. back line, Hedgehogs dishing out the damage. Zero's able to drop oh, no. the ultimate. Who's going to win? It's going to be Zero's coming out on top with a sliver of HP. Ice Ice up in the air, dunking down on two. No one. No one. Ice Ice is just going to watch <laughs> the Olympus Bolts retreat. And by the skin of their teeth, Zero survives that engagement. Hedgehog goes down, and it's going to be a 4v5 for the next 40 seconds. That must have been single digit HP oh, for sure. there for zeros. And we could see that was the mark from Kali as well. Would have been a reset for Hedgehog's HP bar. And that would have been even better. Now, finally in position on the back line with Impox to see if they can get in and take away this Fire Giant. Ultimate online still for Streak up here. Can dash across the entirety of the map. Deathwalker health? falling low. Oh! Lightning strike bouncing through. Deathwalker able to escape death there from the Olympus Bolts. As Sager has made the rotation back in. It's a 4v5. Call it a 4v4 as Deathwalker's got to be forced back into the base here. It's a TKO. No teleport online for the Jing Chin as well. So Yomi Tanuki have no choice but to back off this Fire Giant and allow Ooh. the Olympus Bolts to take over this pit. Yeah, they've pulled it. They're going to start it up. Yomi Tanuki are more than about and ready to contest it. And yeah, I think the Bolts know that they can't take an easy secure. When Zeus is there, man, oh, it's sure. just really not possible. But... We saw the Hedgehog is just about able to take down Zeros and no beads, no Aegis for another 50 seconds. If Hedgehog can find another window of opportunity, well, they might come, but not if Sega's getting plucked into danger. Sega plucked in, but able to dash out. A-OK -okay there with the Yomi Tanuki, just not in quite the perfect position to follow up on that great yank there from Emilito. Once again, it's got to be Iport. It's got to be Jockin. These are the two key targets. Hedgehog's going to be diving the back line all day long. Got to watch out for that. The Yomi Tanuki are back in action here. Full HP. Got a couple heals coming through from Emilito as well. Hedgehog back online. Joining the fray here. Wrapping around this right side of the map. Right alongside Ice Ice. Pyromancer's going to be so the target. Tense. A little bit of a, an easier objective to take there for the Yomi Tanuki. Look, mid lane Phoenix back up for the Olympus Bolts. The gold lead is about 6k in favor of the Yomi Tanuki, but it, that's really not, not going to be that Gone. big of a deal right sure. now. Another big Ooh. pluck on the Sega, though, and the fight begins. Force of the Cavalry charge, though, just for some CC immunity. Discordia O comes through, lands on Emilito, not the target you wanted. Deathwalker in the back line, yanking forward Iport. Streak up with the auto attacks, takes out the crucial mid laner there. And now Zero Hedgehog's in. with a big time lightning storm to separate the Bolts from Hedgehog. Sager takes out Zeros in the meantime. So Hedgehog doesn't find their target. Streak up is dishing out auto. Sager in the back line looking for Ice Ice. Emilito is the new target. Streak up has joined his support. Hedgehog no oh. ultimate to keep him alive. And it's between three members now of the Olympus Bolts. And Streak up throwing out auto attacks. A double knockup knock from Deathwalker. And Streak up just free casting in the back line. Jockin does take out Emilito. Oh Jockin man! Takes out Streak up Jockin coming up big for the Bolts. 
Uh, it was huge for the bolts there that the two two of the members who survived have all the sustain in the world. That obnoxious combo between Aphrodite and Guan Yu just keeps jocking alive throughout all of that. They, they, they were low health was the Heimdall, but able to just constantly churn out the damage. And that's what the carry is good for, right? Constant damage output. And we're hitting away at all opportunities. It's unfortunate again for Hedgehog that they can't quite lock down their targets. Getting close, Zero's again really low HP, but you know the, the, the peel has been great for, for the most part. It hasn't actually been Kali taking over these fights like we maybe would have expected. It's been either iPort or Jokin, whoever gets left behind is able to just really churn through this Yomi Tanuki lineup. And now, both find themselves at this fire giant pit with the means to take it down. Let's see what the Yomi Tanuki have to do to answer it. Bolt's picking up this fire giant. Fire giant getting chunked down here already at half HP. Deathwalker moving into this pit. Got that whirlwind of rage and steel online. Sager's in the back line though. Absolutely managing zeros right now. Managing four members of the Yomi Tanuki as it's Deathwalker against the world here. Trying so to stop low. This fire giant push. Sager doesn't go down. I port takes Sager's out still in the meantime. Olympus bolts find the fire giant. Ice Ice trades out Sager, able to escape. It's a one for one. Both solo laners fall, but the Olympus bolts come up with the FG. I think that's why we're seeing Sega take this Guan Yu instead of this Hercules. Playing it the exact same way. Get onto Zero. Zero's is the threat. Take them away from the, the objective. There's no detonate to secure it. It's just Deathwalker on the scene. And what's Jing Chen going to do? He's going to throw you around a bit? All right. He's not going to steal the objective, though. And I actually like that the bolts decided to turn their attention to Deathwalker once they realized just how much space Sega was creating. When there is no threat coming through, take away everything. Every threat. They took down Deathwalker, then turned their attention to that fire giant. It's an enhanced fire giant now that the Olympus Bolts have picked up, and they find themselves just in a great position now. I, I, I can't, I cannot overestimate how much Sega did right there. It was so much work to put so much pressure onto not only Zeros, but the rest of the team as well, which meant that the Omi Tanuki is spending so much time trying to kill off this Guan Yu, which they did eventually do. But by that point, the Enhanced Fire Giant's gone. The rest of the bolts are more than healthy, more than happy to continue fighting. It means that the Yomi Tsunuki have to reset, have to give up this gold fury, give up this mid lane tower. It, the space that Sega created there will be felt for these next, like, 10 minutes. Tier 2 tower under pressure here from the Olympus bolts in the middle lane. And Melito pushing forward. Same thing goes for Ice Ice. Kind of surprised the Yomi Tsunuki are defending this Tier 2. But maybe they just give it up and take the Phoenix fight. And it looks like that's what the Tanuki are going to elect to do. Meanwhile, Hedgehog shoving up on this left-hand side. It's Hedgehog versus Zeros, and that's not a fight I'm super thrilled for if I'm Zeros. Yeah, it's always where Kali wants to shine, right? Wants to get on top of a backliner and just take them out. His first runic bomb onto that left side, Phoenix, but the mid lane Phoenix also in trouble as well. Ice Ice to the sky, though. Ice Ice in the air. Hedgehog ultimate online. Keep that in mind. Cavalry charges down. Now Ice Ice doesn't find anybody with that anvil of dawn so that's going to be on cooldown for the next 60 seconds or so iport forced out by deathwalker sager has made his way back into the fight with that teleport impox connected to jockin who's throwing auto attacks into that mid lane phoenix the lightning storm used just to separate the fight in half here no priority targets come through from zeros healing coming out from impox seconds right on back on top here sager charging forward only a couple more autos will secure this middle lane phoenix and the Yomi Tanuki have burned a lot to get little in return. And they get this left side Phoenix as well. Doesn't look like it, but they're going to make an attempt. Are oh, the Olympus Bolts still only have 10 seconds on Fire Giant? Looks like they want to go for it, but they're not going to overstep as the Yomi Tanuki are in position to defend. But they're not backing away at times. I think the Bolts are, you know, they've got their tails up right now. They, they've seen an opportunity and it all just seems to be working. But I, Ice Ice again on the Thor, not quite connecting with that Anvil of Dawn and has to just teleport on away. Uh, you know, at some point, you're just not having the impact that you really need. Now, Thor is a difficult god to play oh. from that stage, but Hedgehog gets a good uh, stun on to get rid of the bubble. That's the threat this Kali now brings. Has the crit online, has the malicious Deathbringer, as well as that bladed boomerang means they're going to hit hard, and they're going to hit often. That's a lot of cooldown coming out from Kali, actually, which might surprise some people. You know, if that stun goes on cooldown, or even just the leap, it, it, it's, it's going to be very often. Uh, this Kali will be jumping around, but the Fire Giant on its way back, 
it's mid lane Phoenix again only. It's not been a good day for mid lane Phoenix, as it seems. But <laughs> well, you know, the Bolts will be happy to have at least some pressure on the map set on their side this time. Because again, you have to keep zeros away if you're going to have any hope of taking this fire giant. For the first time this game, the Olympus Bolts have found themselves a gold lead. Gold no longer relevant, but important to point out that they're on top. They're in the driver's seat, are the Olympus Bolts. Yomi Tanuki still leading in kills, but who cares at this point? Fire Giant is up. Back on the map, 35 minutes. That bad boy's enhanced. Pyromancer has come back as yep. well. And the Yomi Tanuki have no choice but to allow this objective to go. And that's tough. I mean, we've seen the effectiveness of these Pyromancer bombs. We've seen them yep. take down the, the middle lane Phoenix, the towers. Huge chunk of damage on that left-hand side. So just another tool in the tool belt of the Olympus Bolts for that incoming siege. Like I said, this runic bomb, probably the only thing on the side of the Olympus Bolts that can actually out-secure or detonate from zeros. But now it's a 4 on 5 engagement as Ice Ice is on their way over. Hedgehog goes to meet them, doesn't quite catch it. What a huge stun coming out from Sega, though. Sega, once again, just it's Sega versus the entirety of the Yomi Tanuki. Impox Impox yanks bouncing. in and uses the ultimate as well. Lightning Storm comes through. Impox is the target, but Hedgehog takes out zeros in the back line. And Jockin finds Emilito. Ipor takes out Streak Ipor. Up. Ice Ice has to have, I mean, a massive come up here, but it's not going to happen. Only finds two members the end. of the Olympus Bolts, and it is Ice Ice versus the entirety of the Olympus Bolts. Mid lane Phoenix is down. Hedgehog and Sager moving forward. Jockin is here as well. I don't see a world. Ice Ice, wake Ice up. Wakey, wakey. Convinced. You have to look <laughs> here, Ice Ice. The Kali and Sager chunking away at this Titan, chunking away at Ice Ice, who's forced to teleport away. Jockin making the I way don't know well, here. Throwing auto attacks into this Titan. Ice Ice onto Jockin. Ice Ice going down. down. And it's going to be an Olympus Bolts victory here in game number two. Oh, I wasn't sure they were going to actually have enough damage there, but took their time, had a full minion wave. Ice Ice not able to clear out those fire minions. And... I mean, that's that. You know, it was it was a scrappy engagement, actually, but was relatively equal. But when it's only Ice Ice left alive, no matter how much the Bolts had to commit, they still had enough left in the tank to turn that one into a victory, and Dimes were going to a game three. And anytime there's a Kali on the board, it is a ticking time bomb. I mean, we've been saying that for like 10 years at yeah. this point, and it was just proved there by Hedgehog. You can put Hedgehog down, you can kill the Kali, streak up, you can get a five-level lead in the duo lane, but as soon as 35 minutes hit, that Kali's going to slam for a 1,000. Mm -hmm. It's going to take out the zeros, going to take out streak up, and it's going to find an Olympus Bolts victory. Okay, now have a nice turnaround as well on the Heimdall. I think zero and four at one point ends the game six and four. Uh, maybe it was even zero and three and ended up just falling at the end there. So, you know, it, it, like you said... It doesn't matter if you can have a huge lead in the early game if you're not able to convert it at the final stages. And yeah, I mean, the Olympus Bolts just tied everything together. It, it was tough for them. I, I would say they never really had a convincing victory after that early uh, Phoenix push from the Yomi Tanuki. But after that stage, you know, they, they were able to piece together exactly what they needed at all stages. And yeah, managed to take down an Enhanced Fire Giant, take a Phoenix... You only have to have a small victory in the final fight, and that's all they had. And, you know, Judas, I really want to dial in. You know, we can talk about the Kali, whatever. Iport, in both game one and game yep. two, topping the damage charts, free casting in the back line, great positioning, great mechanics. I feel like just because Iport's not picking up these flashy kills or, you know, really uh, doing anything team fight changing but just consistent yes. pumping out damage and that's exactly what you're looking for from your middle laner i've been super impressed with iport in games one and two yeah it did fantastically as well especially at the end of that last fight it's worth pointing out that a streak up actually right. dove on specifically to iport mm -hmm. as did ice ice iport goes and kills streak up <laughs> before dying to ice ice eventually but you know if chernobog's still there that that game doesn't end for sure, you know, the Chernobyl would also return to base. It would have been a three-on-two, which is much more difficult for the Bolts to take. And yeah, like you said, iPod's been quietly having a major impact. So we'll have to see if the uh, Yomi Tanuki can find a way to deal with them in game three. Game number three coming your way in just a minute. Stick around. You're not going to win it. Want to miss this epic conclusion between the Tanuki and the Bolts. Mm -hmm.
Howdy folks, welcome back into the Smite Challenger Circuit. We're in Europe, it's week five, it's game number three. Tanuki and Bolts, you've got Dimes, you've got Judas. I'm not even going to let you get a word at Judas. We're going straight into picks advance for game number three. That's all right, I've got nothing more to say than I'm excited to see on how this is going to go. Because it's been back and forth, and it's not usual we get games that are so close throughout the entire game, and then also turn into... A close set as well. Sometimes you see one game, one team dominates game one, one team dominates game two, but there's been no such domination so far. It's been really equal across the board. And I think while it's been a relatively scrappy game, both teams have come in with game plans and they've been making the game plans work out so far. And I mean, that's why we find ourselves one to one. Aphrodite's got to go. I mean, we've seen <laughs> already has. great things on it in game one and game number two. So that was gone off the table hedgehog great showing on a circuit in game number one as well so that will take off the board Kernano so far the only ban for the bolts i'm very curious i was gonna say I, we've seen the hunters come through for the bolts every single time thought maybe they might go for a target ban they elect to just go the ishtar Kernano's classic across the board as we head back to the yomi tanuki bans I, I still haven't quite worked out why the bolts are opting to ban this way uh streak up you know, I would argue the Rama and the Chernobog both maybe should be banned oh, out. Chernobog but crazy. both those left wide open, I guess, uh, you know, with the way that the Yomi Tanuki have been drafting, it's been very team fight based carries. And Ishtar and Kurnos do that very well, as, as well as Martikoros, you know, uh, generally seen in the middle lane. But not always. You can put them in the hunt and roll and they will still put out large amounts of damage through these team fights. But for the first time, actually, Dimes, we're seeing the Yomi Tanuki having the first pick and i do wonder exactly what they'll go for and where their priorities lie and we're seeing the hebo being highlighted might well be coming out for ice ice in the jungle but could also be for zeros in the mid lane i was gonna say we've seen both players take it into the roles respectively and do very well with it typically you don't see the hubbo in the middle lane but mm -hmm. zeros loves to bring those high I will not damage glass cannon style picks into the middle lane Saker had an absolutely outstanding performance on this Guan Yu in game number yep. two. Same thing goes for Jockin on this Heimdall. So you just want to pick it right back up for the Bolts. I wonder if we'll see the Yomi Tanuki go back to the Sylvanas. Now, it <laughs> counted out Heimdall pretty well early on. But late game, I don't really remember seeing Sylvanas, Ooh. which is a shame for Emelito because they played so well in the early stages. That first 10 minutes, Emelito was completely running the show. But... Chiron being Feel locked in, Rama. as well as a Rama. So, showing their hand a little bit here are the Yomi Tsuruki. So, this should put Hebo into the jungle. Chiron in the middle lane with Rama as the hunter. I'm a big fan of Chiron personally, but I don't think they're a very strong god at the moment, especially if the Bolts can pick up a Fenrir, because, you know, Chiron can just be charged down through that giddy-up. Fenrir sure. cares not for your speed. They just decide to ravage you anyway. So... Um, it's going to be tough for the Yomi Tanuki to pull this off because this, this Fenrir counters out Hebo, counters out Chiron. That's a pretty good job in Arama, too. Great pickup there for the Bolts. Nox taken off the table. Changa goes the way of the graveyard as well Still don't here know from why. the Yomi Tanuki. I'm also, I mean, <laughs> that's a. We'll talk about Changa if she ever gets picked into a game. But for right good now, point. <laughs> it's going to be a couple of supports off the board for the Olympus Bolts. And I mean, where do the Yomi Tanuki go from here? You've got the double hunter, you've got the glass cannon in the jungle, you're looking for support, you're looking for a solo. I mean, maybe maybe like a, a Fafnir pickup for that mass attack speed buff. I mean, what are your thoughts? 
Uh, um, my, my thoughts are, how are we Yemoja. picking Yemoja when Yemoja's being banned now? That's very interesting. Seems but like an exploit. The, the b bolts are, yeah, really, really pulling out all the stops for this game. They're, they're making sure that uh, so, something crazy happens to keep the Yomi Tanuki off. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, production's just noticed. Um, <laughs> there but, we go. But uh, what, what, what I do want to say is, the Yomi Tanuki are leaving a lot on the table, but they've also kept, kept themselves away from certain picks. Like, Horus has been very highly prioritized generally, but we haven't seen any of it, either in the support role or in the solo lane. And it would work pretty well, I think, for this Yomi Tanuki lineup. But Bacchus nice, Bologna ends up being what they go for. This is pressure. This is aggression coming out. And that does explain why the Horus has not been available. It was actually the second ban coming out from the Bolts. But I think Bacchus Bologna, combine that with a Chiron on the Hebo, it does mean that the Yomi Tanuki are again looking to team fight and they're looking to dive ahead. You know, if Love Bacchus is followed up by Bologna, Chiron and Rama can also contribute from long range. So expect the Bolts to find themselves in a, in a tough spot across the map. There's basically no room for safety. And, and we're talking no room for safety. This Bolts composition, if the Yomi Tanuki is made for team fighting, this Bolts is absolutely filthy for team fighting. But that's for like that's a conversation for like 10 minutes from now, Judas. Let's yes. head into game number three here. The Yomi Tanuki, the Olympus Bolts to see who is not going to be the worst team in the SEC here. And like I said, this <laughs> what is... What a price. Yeah, and what, what did you call it? You called it the, um, the it, wooden it's, spoon. Yes, it's the wooden spoon for the loser. They, they, they will end up with the trophy of a wooden spoon for being officially the worst team in Phase 1 of the EU SEC. And, you know, it, it's, it's worth fighting to not be that, right? Because, of course, coming into relegations, you're also seeded based on this placement you know you, you sure. don't want to be going in bottom place you know even if you're fully aware that you are going into relegations but like you know the, the players on these two teams you know we're seeing the olympus bolts a, a few of them we saw towards the last phase of soc last season and they don't want to go back right they, they made it to the scc there are no interest in going back but also the yomi tanuki they were in worlds in january they, they played at world some of these players and they might genuinely have to go back down to the S SOC, and it's just not the spot you want to find yourselves in, but I'm not sure what spot Abelito finds themselves in. They're blinking early, gets the beads away from Joking. Oh, leap in Whoa. here from Streak Up with some great body blocks from Impox and knock up onto the Emoja. Emolito, hyper aggressive on this Bacchus, not even a minute into this game. Maybe hit level two before you charge forward there, <laughs> Emolito. But plenty of damage on both Impox and Jokin, so. Emilito and Streaker are definitely going to have pressure on this left side. I, I mentioned they were looking to jump forward, but I, I thought, like you said, it, well, that was going to be in about 10 minutes from now. But no, <laughs> Streaker and Emilito immediately getting in, getting aggressive, just trying to show pressure in this dual lane. Because in game number two, the Obi Tanuki's duo lane was the shining light across their entire team. So it's understandable that they would want to try to recreate that. Now, you do have to be careful when you play so aggressively about any aggression coming back the other way. And Hedgehog, of course, on this Fenrir, more than happy to put up some early game damage. But Ice Ice dishes it right back. Might be in a bad spot here as those Ice Shards fall down from the sky. That's Merlin's doing. I poured on this Merlin. I mean, as, hold on for oh. just a second here as Impox is falling low. Emilito with the burp. Locked down onto Impox. A couple more autos. Streak up oh. out of mana. Who cares? Bacchus comes through with the first kill here. And Yomi Tanuki kick things off with a bang in the duo lane. Another first blood pre two minutes for the Yomi Tanuki duo lane. And now, will that be a sign that the Olympus Bolts are eventually going to win out? I'm not so <laughs> sure. Because that's exactly how this duo lane wants to play. And, and you're know, really, really getting the rewards that I'm not quite sure why Impox ended up in that side of the map. Uh, you know, and ended up far away from the teammate, far away from safety, and ends up falling down for it. But. You know, uh, again, a first blood going to the Tanuki is pretty bad news for the Olympus Bolts, especially when you have a Fenrir in the jungle. Fenrir, one of the primo guards for actually picking up a first blood themselves. You're probably one of the highest first blood rate guards in the game, you would expect. So uh, it's, it's a bit of a shame for Hedgehog that they can't quite get off to that flying start, but still looking around. But it looks like this first blue buff is where the first part of aggression is going to come through from these two junglers. Beans online here for Ice Ice. So no blink. Huge damage coming out from Hedgehog. That brutalized, oh, man. like you said, oh, one of man. the most aggressive abilities in this early game here as Ice Ice is going to be TKO'd back to base. Sager and Hedgehog combined to just, I wouldn't even call that a steal. That was just a, a 
reclamation of that blue buff. It was already <laughs> the there. repo were, man. Yeah, exactly. They were simply taking possession of it as Emilito and Streak Up were combining on this left hand side to do the exact same thing to this purple buff. Were they able to seal that away though? They certainly were. Emilito, ooh, snags it for himself. Not exactly <laughs> sure if that's the way it wanted to go there. But I, I want to return to this point I, w I was thinking about. Uh, like I said, um, Last game, iPort was kind of the, this this quiet superstar for the Olympic yes. Bulls, right? Topping the charts in game one. Same thing goes for game two. And Giannis, good damage, kind of weird, not not the most confirmable damage. Discordia, also not a, a super premier mid lane god, but this Merlin. I mean, this Merlin yep. has been absolutely running the meta in the middle lane. And now you put someone like iPort on the Merlin, I see big things. Yeah, potentially big things. Uh, it's a bit of a slow starter as well, of course, you know, as, as we generally find in these uh, mid lane battles, don't want to be getting involved too, too early on. They want to make sure they're farmed up and have all the damage at their disposal before they start getting involved. But like you said, we've seen iPod particularly playing these mages that are firing over walls in these jungle fights. And that's what Merlin does possibly better than anyone right now, has so many abilities at their disposal, but also provides some objective burn. And I think that is what the Olympus Bolts are going to need because if they are ever going to find a window to take an objective, it's going to have to be done quick because the Yomi Tanuki will be more than interested in stealing things away when you combine Ice Slice with the Crushing Wave, Zeros with the Centaurus. It's not going to be an easy confirm for the Bolts if there's any sort of contention. So I think I port getting involved in these objectives but staying away from the fights early on is the way you'd want to see it. But Zeros... And this Chiron already has the Transcendence finished and the Bluestone Pendant as well. They're going to be looking to fight in the next few minutes. So when you see a double Hunter composition, I mean, at least what, what I think of Judas when I see that is early objectives, shred, yeah. right? Objective secure. You've got objective secure in spades with Ice Ice, right? Between the Water Hands, the Knock Up, and the Crushing Wave. I mean, that objective is going to go the way of Yomi Tsunuki more times than not. Yeah. I mean, how do you think that that's the way that the Tanuki are thinking as well, or is this a farm up and wait and see kind of situation? I think the Tanuki will be looking through this duo lane to be turning, converting all of this pressure into some early gold views. Like you said, they can just bring zeros over. Now, zeros on the Chiron, it's not uh, a traditional hunter, right? More ability sure. based, but still has those powerful auto attacks that they will be churning out into this gold fury. Combine that with Streak Up and Hedgehog on the round, all the way around the backside here. Use the leap early there, forced into the Ragnarok just to immune the CC from Emilito. Pulls the Bacchus into the back line. Impox is here, but so is Streak up and Ice Ice. Impox dropping low. Oh, body block. What phenomenal body blocks from Emilito, who picks up a second blood for himself there. Ice Ice forced from the crushing wave to get out of Dodge. Jockin, excuse me, Hedgehog, leaping forward there, chasing out the hob block. Here's zeros. One auto, two auto, three auto. Put Hedgehog in the ground, but Jockin's not done. Iport and Street and uh, Streak up brawling it out, jocking around the backside, sent Emilito away, but then wait if they're to come back down. Streak up so low though. Emilito over the top finds Iport, jocking completely out of mana. Zeros dashing forward, not enough of that giddy up in the tank there to hit jocking backwards. So it's gonna be what a two for two there. Impox has made the rotation back in, and Emilito three zero oh, and one on man. the Bacchus doing damage. <laughs> Bacchus does this, man. Bacchus can just go a bit crazy early on. Has relatively high base damage across the board. Uh, that belly flop is an absolute nightmare to deal with, especially if there's any sort of follow-up. Uh, and yeah, just, just been taking every purple buff, every shield buff has gone on to Amelito right now. Feeling like an ADC as they used to be up until a couple of weeks ago. Just absorbing all of this farm. But we saw there what Hedgehog is able to do if given any room with Ice Ice, right? It was only a small window in that fight but they caught ice ice just off to the side all alone charged them down and you know with the brutalized coming through as well tons of damage again hedgehog looking for this priority target because there's really not a whole lot zeros uh, or ice ice can do about it you know if uh, fenrir wants to attack you fenrir is going to be doing it but i i think when we find these fights go on a bit longer if there's more room for zeros to peel with uh, that training exercise as well, get the CC cleanse off, particularly on the Ragnarok targets, then we might see some more difficulties for Hedgehog. But again, for another 10 minutes or so, everything that the Olympus Bolts succeed with is likely to come from this Fenrir. Ooh, big time. In hand damage coming out from Streak up here. Got those devs gloves online. Only about 23 stacks, though. He's kind of lagging behind Jockin right now, but plenty of damage to send Ipox back to base as Emilito has been camping in this left side lane. 
Meanwhile, in the middle lane, slight advantage for Zeros as Emilito wants to make something happen here on this left hand side. Minions under tower, Jockin clearing a wave. I don't foresee any more aggression coming out from Emilito here. A couple Bastions going down. But pretty much parity across the map here. A slight gold lead for the Yomi Tanuki, not even 10 minutes in as Ice has made the rotation to the shield buff. And a bit of quiet on the battlefield. Yeah, interesting that the Yomi Tanuki duo lane trying to take down the tower without even finishing off the Bastions. Like, yeah. it, it's fine, you can do that, but you do miss out on the gold that those Bastions do provide. Now, we have seen Ice Ice spending a lot of time on this left-hand side of the map, just hunting. I'm not quite sure what far, though, because uh, Hedgehog's been having a great time on right, taking all this farm, but Emelito jumping in. Mpox is the target every single time. Is there a reason they're looking for this Yamoja over Jockin, or, or is it just who happens to be further up in the lane? I think Yamoja does suffer a lot into uh, Bacchus. You know, we, we did see Sylvanas plucking Jockin out of the uh, out of the teleport crystals in game two, but Amelito is going to struggle to do that, especially with a knockup immunity. But now Mpox in more danger. Oh, Mpox locked down. Mpox put in the ground by streak up the hunter finding the first kill for himself there finally stealing a kill away from Emilita <laughs> on this Bacchus that ice how dare they pays dividends but meanwhile hedgehog just clearing the yomi tanuki jungle on the right hand side in the turn oh hedgehog going for the leap onto zeros oh. and actually uses the ragnarok as well doesn't connect and that's unfortunate because the gold cheery is being done by the yomi tanuki like i said they want to take this early pressure in the dual lane and convert it in to these early objectives too didn't even need to bring zeros over and this this is where the bolts might suffer this is where you worry for their early game because it only comes really through hedgehog like we mentioned who has had a good time farming but you don't really just want to be farming on, uh, on a Fenrir. You know, Fenrir is one of his best traits is that you can get into the enemy jungle and invade all of their camps. It's very tough to contest. But if you're losing on the other side of the map, all of those invades are not really paying off. You know, we see Deathwalker pretty much keeping parity with Sega on the Guan Yu, despite losing their blue buff multiple times. It, it, it's just not quite working yet for the bolts, and it all comes through this duo lane. So. Hopefully for them, they can find a way to slow it down. Luckily, Streakup is not on the Chernobog, so can't impact all the way across the map quite as effectively. But with Emilito go starting these engagements with this early Bacchus play, with all the belly flop damage coming out, uh, and actually it's picked up a Divine Ruin for increased uh, anti-heal as well. This Bacchus is a real threat. It's probably more of a threat than Hedgehog on this Fenrir, so you know, Tanuki certainly needs to play around the support. Buffs responding on both the left and right side of the maps as Ice Ice forced into that crushing wave to immune damage out of Hedgehog. Streak up finds a kill on the left side oh. of the map there. Zero's coming through with the shots. Doesn't need him though. Deathwalker picks up a kill of his own there. And Sager is forced into the cavalry charge just to escape danger from some great rotations out of Ice Ice and Zero. So Yomi Tanuki winning across the map. If it wasn't scary before for the bolts, now the alarm bells need to be ringing extremely loud and clear because the right-hand side of the map, which had been their hunting ground, is now going from bad to worse as I put on more danger again. Flicker away, beads immune the belly no flop. Emilito's not done. No Couple way. Shots, a great oh, age is out of wow. my board. Holding it until the very last moment as Sager's going to return a kill onto Emilito there. I port with the perfect baits. I mean, that was beautiful. That was like cheese to a rat trap. It like cheese to a rat trap, but I mean, I mean, the rat was screaming the whole time because <laughs> like, I thought there is no way they were expecting to survive help, help, that. Help, help. <laughs> exactly, that might have been single digit HP there. Hedgehog trying to get aggressive onto zeros and ice ice, but not finding a window there either. Finally, the Yomi Tanuki do overstep, and actually, that is a shutdown onto Emilito, so that is quite impactful to pick up. You know, that, that is an important kill, actually. It, it's not the usual trading your support away, normally, you're quite happy to do that. That. But what your support has had as much farm and as many kills so far and has now gone into the blink as well. Like, like Emilito is fully planning on playing all out aggression, but that only works up to a point, you know. It, at, at some point, this Bacchus will not quite be tanky enough to do what they need to do. I, but importantly, the the Olympus Bolts have to make it that far, right? I mean, if Yomi Tanuki are able to, to shove this lead and to shut it down, as you can already see there, Emilito's not as tanky as his counterpart in Impox, already falling to half HP with just a couple of auto attacks and a couple of shots. But if the Yomi Tanuki can push 
the gas pedal and really push this game into hyperdrive here, Emilito is just going to do the damage and they won't have to worry about being taken. Yeah, if, if Emilito's plan is get in, cause some chaos, and then leave by by virtue of the green gray screen screen, then fair <laughs> enough, fair enough if that's the plan. But uh, you know we'll have to see if the Yomi Tanuki can continue to convert into these objectives. Now they've only taken the one Gold Fury so far. The Gold Fury coming back up onto the board, and the Pyromancer is still happy and healthy on that right hand side jungle. But Hedgehog not going to make an attempt again. But zeros and ice ice are just too difficult to get to now. Immediately turned away is Hedgehog. You know, there's been so much pressure on this left side. Hold on for just a second. Iport knocked up Ice Ice. Throwing out some of those uh, water hands there as Hedgehog turns it right back around on a streak up. Uses the beats, dashing, rolling in with that combat roll. Hedgehog not quite online are the autos from streak up. One shot Ooh. Astral Arrows. Hedgehog, can he dodge Away. the third one? A little off the mark there is streak up, but guess who's made Clean the up, rotation? Crew. It's Emilito with the Divine Ruin. Here's the Belch. Locked down. Oh. Wait for it. Sit through the sky. Jockin saving the life of Hedgehog. And meanwhile, Ice is getting targeted down by Sager. Tons of damage coming out from Sager there onto the back line of the Yomi Tanuki. Emilito has stepped on up high. Sega does what they need to do, create the space. Pyromancer does go the way of the Olympus Bolts in the meantime, but I mean, uh, sorry, it uh, goes the way of the Yomi Tanuki, I believe. But instead, the fight carries on this left hand side. The bolts are not done because they would create some space for a Gold Fury. Well, when you don't get any kills and you lose the Pyromancer, you got to make something happen. Emilito, oh, the man. target of Hedgehog here, dashing Ipod. forward as Iport. Great flicker Merlin on the board here, 2 1 and 2 for the killer mid laner. Hedgehog That's takes him. out zeros in the middle lane. And that opens the door wide for the Olympus Bolts to take down this prime here. The Olymp the Olympus Bolts are still miles down in gold, but this Gold Fury and all of the kills they've been taking are really going to help with that. You know, they've they've found these windows where the Yomi Tanuki are stepping up too high. Emilito had committed a lot over the top on the left-hand side, but still managed to survive up until the mid lane. But then Hedgehog finds their window, right? They've kept the wraps onto this Fenrir. There's really been no opportunities. But as soon as there was a chance for Fenrir to hit multiple brutalizes through that fight, that's it. You know, it, 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 Zeros can't contend with this god on their own. They need the backup from either Emilito or Ice Ice, but neither were around. And that's when Hedgehog can clean up the kills. And I think maybe the Tanuki will recognize that they, they got a little bit crazy there. Now, they have taken down two Tier 1 towers still, which does explain some of that 4,000 gold lead. So, you know, they're still in a good position on the Yoda side. They're not, not, you know, blown away by that fight, but need to recognize that this, again, still a strong team. The Olympus Bolts won out in Game 2, and it, they didn't get lucky. They didn't just get some mag magical miracle win. It was actually well-deserved, so... The only Tanuki need to calm things down just a touch. Or, I mean, again, they risk winning that wooden spoon, and, and uh, nobody wants to take home a wooden spoon. Emilito going in once again, but dives into four what members four? of Olympus Bolts. Not exactly sure if Emilito knew that was his fate after that belly flop going down to the likes of Hedgehog. Seven and six, the Yomi Tanuki have a kill lead, but well, I'm gold lead actually as well goes the way of the Yomi Tanuki to the tune of about 4,000. It's been a while since I've peaked up to those gold numbers. That is significantly more than I was anticipating uh, with such a close kill and experience gap. Yeah, I mean, that that's pretty much just the towers and the pressure that was being put on duo lane early on. You see a three-level deficit for Jokin onto Streak Up. You know, if they, if they are able to take down this Rama and get Jokin online, but Jokin hasn't even fallen. It's just purely been minions walking into their tower, but it looks like there's some aggression on this left-hand side. It's 2v2 ADCs and junglers picked up is Ice Ice Hedgehog with a great Ragnarok there to put the jungler on the ground. Zeros has made the rotation as well. Hedgehog with a jump. No leap away hey. over the wall. Streak up it's immediately okay. once again into four. Oh, great no. Yamoja walls there. Streak up forced up into the sky. Emilito's made the rotation back in. A good double stun. Jockin is the target. Streak up able to escape for just a moment. Hedgehog over the top there with the unchained. Whoa, right the around. Ground. And now it's Emilito once again. Deja vu versus the world. They're going to look to take down this Bacchus. Not tanky at all. Does leap over the stun, but there will be some damage coming through. Jokin actually goes for the ultimate there. Not happy with how Emilito has played so far. But Hedgehog, in just a few minutes, has racked up to a rampage right now. Has really dragged their team back into it. Now the gold, about 3,000, and that's 
I mean, purely explained now through those tier one towers and the gold fury and pyromancer taken down. The kills have been pretty much negated. In fact, the Olympus bolts take a kill lead, shut down all the high priority targets. Now, Deathwalker with a two level lead onto Sega. This Bologna might come online later on and have somewhat of an impact, but we saw how Sega played Quan Yu in game number two as well. I think this solo lane involvement will be what turns all of these fights because Hedgehog has had so much space. Now, Bologna can negate all of that space because if Hedgehog is alone, all of a sudden, no matter how much time you have to take these kills, it's not going to be enough. And you can actually see Hedgehog building into that Stone of Binding is looking more to not quite just 100 to 0. People will look to facilitate their team as well. But that was bold. Take a Pyromancer down. I have a Runic Bomb in pocket as well. This game is extremely well balanced yet again at the 20 minute mark. You know, Judas, I'm so glad you brought up Deathwalker and Sager there because the last, what, three fights or so, Sager has been involved in, and we haven't seen a peep out of Deathwalker so far. Yep. I mean, literally Deathwalker, and that shows in the in the experience in Gold Lead, right? I mean, Sager just ticked over to 17, call it a, a two-level lead for Deathwalker here in the solo lane. We haven't seen really any presence out of the solo laner from the Yomi Tanuki. And once it's a, a full 5v5 and Deathwalker starts having the impact that Sager has in these fights, I mean, it could be a real game turner here as Sager's bounced backward from the emoji there. It's a 4v4, call it a, a 5v5 as finally Deathwalker has made this rotation to the Gold Fury. Emilito in, in the back line doing plenty of damage. Here comes Deathwalker over the top. Eagles rally, connects onto three. Iport dropping low, forced out of the fight as well. Deathwalker and Emilito. Still pretty healthy here as Zeros is dishing out the damage via his autos. That was a fantastic Rivers Rebuke there from Inbox. Did lock in uh, Deathwalker just after the Eagles rally. So no longer able to get out of those walls is Deathwalker. Now Hedgehog all the way around the backside. Maybe looking at Streak Up. There's only Fury still more than on the table for both teams. Streak Up can certainly solo him out. Aegis use Hedgehog. A little over half HP, but the rest of the Yomi Tanuki has made the rotation to protect their ADC. Now the Olympus Bolts hovering around this Gold Fury pit. Very healthy. And Molino, a little over half HP as well. Streak up is quite low as well. Crushing Wave, the only ultimate online here for the Yomi Tanuki. No great way to get in for Ice Ice. Going. Here comes the Tanuki. They take the Yoni Fury right out from the clutches of the Olympus Bolts. Emilito pays for it with his life. Sager turns it oh. right around. Ice Ice low. Ice Ice down. But Streak up finds another kill onto the jungler. That's a shutdown on the Hedgehog as well, and Streak Up pockets all the gold. The Yomi Tanuki equalized the fight in the two for two, but they did manage to steal away that all important Oni Fury as well. And that, that sets them up now for a really good position because they needed that win. They were starting to bleed a little bit. The, the momentum was just about trending towards the Olympus Bolts, but we mentioned it you know, during picks and bands. The Olympus Bolts can pull objectives and they can burn them pretty quickly, but they have no means to secure it. And when the pressure comes through, the fight comes out. Ice Ice manages to secure the objective while also dishing out a ton of damage. It's just not something that the Olympus Bolts are equipped to deal with. And I was surprised they committed so heavily. I, I, it looked like they were just trying to bait in the fight. In fact, iPort was just dishing out damage over the wall in the meantime, you know, not using that fire stance to really commit to taking the objective down. But... You know, I, I guess the, the call for the Bolts was to take the objective, but, you know, it, it, they just didn't quite have enough in the tank for it, and they weren't able to really put down the rest of the Yomi Tanuki. Now, it is still a close game. There is a 6,000 gold lead again for the Yomi Tanuki. However, the Tanuki had a 6,000 gold lead in game number two, and we saw how that one ended with the Olympus Bolts taking the victory. So I'm not too surprised... Oh, well, I wouldn't be too surprised to see the Olympus Bolts continue to step up to these objectives. But Streak Up has been putting out a large amount of damage, of course, and Jockin's still playing catch up. This Heimdall's been relatively safe, is happy enough, but they can't seem to put down Streak Up enough. Every team fight, Streak Up's finding these shots later on, putting out extended amounts of damage, and that's really the pain for the Yomi Tanuki now. Everything else is going quite well, but they need to. Shut down this Rama before it makes them pay the price for it. Objective still, I mean, crisscrossing the map. The, the Yomi Tanuki have every single one of their tier one towers online. I mean, the Olympus Bolts have not been successful at all at even uh, creating pressure in lanes where the Yomi Tanuki are not existing, like the solo lane. I mean, Ice Ice making the rotation to stop Sager as we speak. 
Deathwalker starting up the Pyromancy here. Plenty of attack speed between the, the Shogun Sorry, the Chin Size Berserker's Broad. Here comes uh, Streak Up, taking out the Pyromancer there. Berserker Shield, I should say. As Emilito charged forward, Ooh. putting half HP onto iPort Zeros, dashing away Ow. from Hedgehog, who just takes out the Chiron. I mean, that was straight up like a 1v2. Hedgehog, though. And Hedgehog had the damage for it. Zeros is going to be in the ground. Hi, giant. 40 seconds, but the Fire Giant go down to the Yomi Tanuki. And Zeros is screaming worth. Streaka finds one onto Sager. And there's no follow-up from the Olympus Bolts. Sega was the only one who recognized the situation. The Yomi Tanuki spotted out that Jokin was in the left-hand side trying to get a split push going and farm up a little bit. And they punished them for it. They, they sent Zeros into mid lane. Be it bait or not bait, <laughs> it ended up working out for the Yomi Tanuki. Who now take down another tier 2 tower. And still Jokin on the left-hand side. They might even look for a Phoenix here. Why not look for a Phoenix? I poured half HP. Has to flicker away. Emilito blinked down. Under half HP now, so not much more that the Yomi can, Tanuki can do with Bologna peeling away from the rest of the squad. This Fury is about to come back online, though. Might be an opportunity here oh. for the Yomi Tanuki to take an engagement against the Olympus Bolts. Really put one more nail in the coffin for the Bolts device. Now the Primal Fury is spawning right now. But it looks like the Bolts might just be able to take this one, uh, the Yomi Tanuki. You're going to reset, spend off all of that gold that they just picked up. You know, it was a large amount all of a sudden. They, they, they'd sort of uh, bided their time a little bit. They, they recognized, oh, hey, we have a window to take Fire Giant. They take it, and then they just shoot forward. They had everyone pile in onto that Tier 1 tower in the mid lane. Then the Tier 2, and the Olympus Bolts may be hoping that you know, the Tanuki would just reset, ended up paying a lot for it, maybe losing more than they really had to. You know, if you send uh, Jokin all the way over to Split Push, they did manage to take down a tier two at least, but those are the only two towers now off the map in favor of the Bolts. And you know, Tanuki would be more than happy with that. They can still now push up all of these waves as they are doing, taking their time with this Fire Giant buff. Still a minute to go on it. They're not looking to take a Phoenix here. It's just about extending this advantage. Now, they had... A similar advantage, but this time it's bigger than they had in game number two. You know, they've they've taken that 6k lead, turned it into almost a 7k lead, and we'll get this Primal Fury as well. Now can the Bolts pull off that Miracle defense again? Now, it, it, it all comes under these these Phoenix defenses. Now, I put on the Merlin. will be more than happy with that. Merlin, probably the best defensive Phoenix Siege in the game. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see that be where the Olympus Bolts take their stand. But the Yomi Tanuki, they lost it once. They have a much more suitable team composition this time, though. Because if Emelito dives deep, streak up and zeroes follow up with the damage, Bolts might not be able to pull off this defense in the same way they might like to. Drew, just kind of surprised there that there was not even a peep from the Olympus Bolts at that Primal Fury or a Tier 2 defense. I mean, we're 26 minutes in. It's not... Like, it's in-game where, you know, you take a botched Tier 2 defense and all of a sudden it's it's GG well played yeah. for you. Kind of kind of surprising for me. Are you shocked that the Olympus Bolts are willing to give up so much of the map so freely? I think they found that during these fights, it's not been easy for them to engage. And if the towers are going down as fast as they are, again, with Deathwalker with the Shogun's Kusari, just means the Streak Up and Zeros, the Double Hunter, of course, can take down these towers really, really fast. I think the Bolts maybe recognize that while there might be opportunities for defense, those opportunities are going to be so slim and difficult because if Hedgehog's not getting a clean angle onto Zeros or Ice Ice, it, the fights just have not been going their way. So I, I think it's understandable that the Bolts opt to not defend that because while it might not spell the end of the game, at least they can say, coming up to this next Fire Giant fight, they still have all the Phoenixes on the table. Well, Sager and Iport weren't willing to let that Pyromancer go without at least a show of face. However, the Yomi Tanuki are able to confirm that one. Put one of those runic bombs in their pocket to the tune of uh, two of them. Got one on each of the duo lane members. Got a runic bomb on the likes of Hedgehog as well. So if the Olympus Bolts ever decide to maybe push into an objective or try for a Fire Giant Steal or a Secure themselves, keep your eye on Hedgehog. I think Hedgehog is going to be the... the is a Hedgehog or Iport going to be the greatest secure potential the Olympus Bolts has. And now, it's about that time, Judas. Approaching 28 minutes, the Fire Giant dance has begun. I hear the tune picking up in the background here. <laughs> Ice Ice dropping 
to uh, about a quarter HP there. Uh, losing about a quarter of their HP, I should say. Blink online, Relic's online. Everyone's healthy Relic-wise. Actives are there, ultimates are there. This is a full 5v5. Oh, wow. Deathwalker with a giant wow. Eagles rally over the top. Shriek up, finds iPort to kick things off. Impox dropped in the back line as well. Dropped the River's Rebuke just to try to dissuade the Yomi Tanuki from moving forward any further. But Deathwalker MVP type plays right there. Yeah, got into the back line, caused all the chaos you need, and expended a bunch of cooldowns, but the Fire Giant's low. Fire Giant dropping low. It's going to be a coin flip. Who takes it? Yomi Tanuki, Tanuki. take down the FG. But what are they going to pay for it? Hedgehog jumping in, dropping down Ice Ice, able to use that crushing wave before going in the ground. Streak up takes up Impox on the back line. Sager is going to be the next down. Zeros, dashing forward. So much penetration online for the Yomi Tanuki. Charging forward. It looks like the middle lane Phoenix is going to be the target. Streak up can't get there any faster. Got a wave of minions as well. Backdoor protections nil for the Olympus Bolt. Sager doing what they can to try to dissuade any kind of oppression here. Jockin sends him through the air, but it's going to drop. The Bacchus finds kill on oh, the no. back line. Sager able to escape. Hedgehog dropping low. Streak up finds himself a rampage. And it's iPort versus four. Yomi Tanuki hovering around the Titan, not willing to commit just yet. Left hand Phoenix is going to be the new target. iPort throws out their damage. Didn't get to in the first fight. Can they in the second fight? Sager now charges through. Evelito goes down. It was looking bad for the bolt almost could, could have been an end game situation with the way that the kills were dropping but just about managed to cling to life and looking to run the rest of the tanuki out of town i'm surprised that it's just the one phoenix actually yeah. in this situation it could have been a lot worse but the fight carries on as sega gets caught oh massive auto text coming out from streak up I and mean, you have to respect the the dominance the titans bane sager come on you know better than to take on a rom as a as a guan yu 30 minutes into the game oni fury going down to the yomi tanuki and it's a complete objective wipe across the map for this order squad and it's just a matter of time before they attempt to break the base once again of the bolts Again, not a good day for mid lane phoenixes. Every <laughs> single game, the mid lane phoenix has oh. fallen down first. So it, it's again, not the worst spot for the bolts to be in. It's not an enhanced fire giant because just now sure. ticking past 30 minutes. But the gold lead is as big as we've seen it this entire set right now. The Yomi Tanuki have the position that they want. They, again are looking to not finish bottom of the SEC. That's all this is for. Uh, and you know, the Bolts are struggling now to get this foothold into the game. All of their early game was through Hedgehog, that mid-stage where they were looking to fight back through. It was all from this Rampage came out from Hedgehog on the Fenrir. But once this Fenrir has struggled now, to keep keep in these fights when the burst damage is just too much from zeros from ice ice and streak up, streak up yet again third game in the row just firing shots constantly again leading the player damage charts with high port just behind the but i port taken out at the start of this fight in the right hand side death walker there finds the priority target gets the eagles rally on top of them and somehow i, I think beads and ages might not have been available for iport because they just couldn't get out of it and like i said the follow-up from zeros was great ice ice even better streak up from long range too the uh, engage advantage for the yomi tanuki is so heavily in their favor that the olympus bolts are constantly playing catch up they're constantly trying to find an opportunity in a fight that the yomi tanuki have chosen to take and the only time the tanuki are going to choose to fight is when they are ready for it so the bolts really struggling to find this counter punch but it's still only a mid lane phoenix down Enhanced Fire Giant is respawning, and the Bolt surely will be looking to take a fight because the Phoenix defense is going to be a lot more difficult with one already down. The Tanuki are in position. Let's see how the Bolt's up to contend it. Yeah, no choice here from the Bolts. It, it, this is a full-on defense mode. Can't take a fight under the Phoenix. Fire Giant's coming back online in 20 seconds. Time to ward up, get vision if you can. I mean, the Yomi Tanuki have such aggressive positioning here, aggressive warding. Going at some of those Dignitas wards. That's old school. But the Olympus <laughs> Bolts, I mean, they have no choice. They, they have no vision. They can't really make their way into the pit. And there's so much shred on the side of the Yomi Tanuki. Especially now that Streak Up has popped his 3k pot. That this Fire Giant is going to go down I mean, with the quickness. Rapidly. Oh, Emilito. Emilito's moved into iPort once again. They know who the target is. Aegis down. And Zeros down. takes out iPort. Rivers rebuke. Oh, Meanwhile, no. in the back line to separate the fight. Streak Up takes up Hedgehog. That is the backline win condition for the Olympus Bolts and the Yomi Tanuki 
they don't need to press the advantage. Grab the Fire Giant, grab this right tower. Mid lane Phoenix it's is about Phoenix. to drop to the light of the minions. There it oh, goes. Oh no! Shaka not able to keep it alive. Now this right side being pressured down. The Yomi Tanuki has taken three games, Judas, but they know exactly who to kill for a victory. Yeah, you do see there. They found iPort, catch him out, and just dive all the way on top of them. And we saw as well, Hedgehog gets that angle onto the back line they were looking for, but all you need is the back line is to peel for each other. Zeros pops the Aegis Amulet, holds Hedgehog in place, and then they take them down. Ooh. Eagles rally in, though, the diving forward of the Tsunuki. Speaking of holding in place, Deathwalker wow. coming up big with a three-man Eagles rally streak up, sending through the auto attacks. And this is going to be a Game 3 victory. GG, the Yomi Tanuki with a dominating... Game number three, you know what? That's not fair to the Olympus Bolts. They had a phenomenal fight back into the Tanuki, but that last 10 minutes came up all Yomi. That was finally what the Yomi Tanuki had been trying to put together all phase. It's just never quite worked out for them. Finally, they managed to get all the advantage. And, you know, we were talking about that final Fire Giant situation. You know, the Yomi Tanuki had the, had the shred, they had the secure, they had the territory, and they had the lead. There was just no way at all for the Olympus Bolts to step up to it. But they had to, because it was that all-important enhanced fire giant. But yet again, we see Streak Up churning out the damage. Iport this time dies three times, did get killed off. But it's been a great showing for the Olympus Bolts. Unfortunately, they find themselves with the wooden spoon. The Olympus Bolts, you know... For forever an SOC squad definitely earned their way into the SCC, now headed Absolutely. back to, to relegations for the SOC. I mean, I have full confidence that they can certainly find their way back into the SCC here, but this was great practice against highly skilled teams. Absolutely. What if you could pull one thing for the Olympus Bolts here, one thing that they could really shore up for their upcoming relegations match, what would you point out, Judas? Uh, I think you need to look at the duo lane. Maybe change something up there because they were under so much pressure early on that it does spill over into the rest of the map. If they could fix that, because the right side of the map was great. That, that solo and jungle side, they were having a good time. If they could just come out of the duo lane with less of a deficit. You don't have to win every duo lane, but when you're under so much pressure, as Emilito and Streak Up were putting out, it can be just hard to turn it around. So that's the first place I would look. Not necessarily it has to be a change of player by any means. The players played fantastically, but just maybe make some adjustments to not find themselves at so much of a deficit, and they'll be looking better for these relegations. Well, the Yomi Tanuki find a 2-1 victory over the Olympus Bolts. The Olympus Bolts falling to the bottom of the barrel. But both of these squads going to be looking forward, I'm sure, to their SOC relegations match while their uh, compatriots on the top of the SEC will be heading to Smite Masters. But that's going to do it for us here, the Smite Challenger Circuit in Europe. SPL is coming your way in just a few minutes, so make sure to stick around. And don't forget, after the SPL, we've got some more SEC action for you, but this time taking place in North America for Judas, for our wonderful production, for our Spectator Raptor, myself, everyone here, thank you so much for tuning in to the European SCC. Stick around for the SPL, and we'll see you for North America later this evening. Stay hydrated.